What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Hello, folks. Uh, you know, all the good stuff that we've been saying. We've been saying it on stage. Yeah. Do you think people can tell they, they know what it is? No. <laughs> Just like saying it for no reason? No, some do. Yeah. A lot don't. Yeah. Some, I think you just say it without it. saying because you say I told you to say it. The last time I didn't. Oh, yeah. Last time I just went out and said hello, folks. And they were. And you think I shouldn't explain? Yeah, I, think I feel so dumb when I do it. And no, everybody I just think your me. face matches up with that. And they, <laughs> you come out and you just go hello, folks, and they're like, yeah. They, I mean, I think they would just go, this is how he starts it. <laughs> and, I, and I say goodbye, folks. Yeah. We were doing all weekend uh, about if I just ended it, and I was like. Good night, America. <laughs> and just like that's the last thing on the special. Just good night, America. And then just and then be done. I feel like for people that don't get it though, either way, you sell it so hard. We were like, hello, folks. folks. It's good. It's like uh yeah. it's fun. It's right. good. It's a good, you know, starting is sometimes the hardest thing to do. You, you have <laughs> yeah. your start. Uh we had a we had an awesome weekend. Uh, all of us were out. We had amazing shows. Everybody that came out. Where were we? Louisville, uh, Indianapolis, Indianapolis, St. Louis, and Kansas City. And uh, these drive-ins have been great, man. We have uh, a few more. Just the last little run, three more uh, coming up: uh, Dallas, Austin, and Houston this weekend. And then I think I'm going to. I'm doing two in December, I believe. Uh, Anaheim and San, and San Diego. I think just Nick will be with me out there. Uh, the bus, you're doing those, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, December. I'd be awkward if I'm like, five, well, you know, yeah. I, I just, I can't. So busy. Uh, <laughs> December five and six out in California. Uh, so those tickets are on sale now as I believe they're on sale. I could be saying this and there's a chance they're not even <laughs> yeah. announced yet, but I, I believe it's on sale. San Diego, Anaheim. I want to say that December 5, 6, uh, me and Nick will be out there. These drive-ins have been good. They, uh, you know, I think everybody's going into them with the right mindset. I think the audience is there with the right mindset. I think they enjoy it. I, uh, I've actually enjoyed doing them. I, I haven't minded them as much as I thought I would. You thought you would not like hearing that crowd and they honk or they, you, people have been sitting out front of them. It's been cold, man. It was in Kansas City, it was 39 degrees. And it was super, super cold. I mean, I remember my, I've learned that I hold the mic with my left hand a lot because <laughs> how cold my left hand was. And I was like, golly, it's almost like showed you your, whatever your habits are of on stage. Uh, but they were, everything was, every show's been great. Every show's been fun. We've been doing some fun. We went to NASCAR race. We, I played with me and Brian. We got hooked up. Uh, Brian hooked this up. We played Valhalla. Uh, played, I played terrible. But uh, it was an unbelievable course. Tiger Woods won his PGA Championship. I said U.S. Open, but he won his PGA Championship there. So did Rory. So getting to play there was unbelievable. And then you might notice we went to the NASCAR race, and this is how you notice because uh, I, you know, Aaron I, Bates. Uh, I'm Aaron Bates. Uh, <laughs> Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Bates. Uh, Aaron Weber is has his own ads. <laughs> Where's your jacket? I got sponsors. Yeah, now, that's that's sponsors. what I'm missing, man. The jacket is unbelievable. The jacket's at the dry cleaners right now. Getting it already <laughs> went to the dry cleaners. No, you just bought it. Oh, uh, no, it's oh, just, I was I like, golly, that's uh, and oh, also Aaron left a windbreaker in where was it? St. Louis. If you Indianapolis, Bel- Bel- Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Yeah. So if you're if you went to the drive in Indianapolis and you find a windbreaker. <laughs> a very big windbreaker. A very a decent sized windbreaker. If you go, if you go, is that a tarp? And they go, no, I think it's a windbreaker. And then you and your buddy get in a fight about it until you get near it and you go, no, it is windbreaker. I was wrong. That is Aaron's. He's willing so, to pay for shipping too. So he's uh, that, that. Yeah, is, dude, I'd love that jacket back. But I, I got a NASCAR jacket, so maybe that'll just be my. Yeah, well, I, I hope we get this windbreaker back. Yeah. So too. if someone's if someone's there, if it didn't get blown away. Yeah. But uh, the NASCAR jacket is unbelievable. I mean, I've literally been laying like in it. bed thinking about it. Like, God, I should have got that jacket. I you mean, know? NASCAR like, has the best merch of any major sport. Yes. It was pretty overwhelming, all the stuff you could get. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of stuff. And you kind of ducked out on your own. I mean, you just, when you went with that jacket, you didn't want a lot of people there. I feel like if y'all were around, I wouldn't have bought it. Because yeah. I would have felt self-conscious. 
Yeah. He looked so official in that jacket. When he came back in, people were like, so uh, where's the parking again? Like, how do we get our car? Like, When you bought, when you said I wanted that jacket, did the people on the counter go, oh, I figured you already owned it, but yeah, we'll give you one. (laughs) Did they they just assume you walk up and just... I had that look already for uh, sure. Bush... uh, I'll take Kurtz then uh 2007 jacket. You know the it's like a, <laughs> that's his old colors he used to run with. Yeah. Uh Kurt Bush, right? It's oh Kevin Harvick. Kevin anyway. Harvick. Kevin yeah. Harvick, sorry. We were walking back to the car and he passed a guy who had a similar jacket. Yeah. And I think did y'all do a head nod? He goes, he Harvick. Goes, hey, Kevin. Yeah, just go, hey man. Hey man. <laughs> Finished second. Yeah, dude. He had a good race. Kevin Harvick had a good race. We were there with Eric Stone Street. Uh and so Eric uh, was uh, awesome, and we all hung out with his buddies. He's friends with a lot of uh, police officers, and those dudes are the best. Yeah, they were awesome. fun. They were super fun. Uh, we got uh, a police escort in there just because they know all these. They know. I mean, they're they're like high up in the police, so they they helped us out and got us in through the, uh, you know, going where people had a party. It wasn't that crowded to begin with. Because they're doing the social distancing. And everybody's wearing masks. <clears throat> That's something that, I mean, you know, people get mad. I It makes me furious. People yell at the middle of the country thinking we're not wearing masks. We were at a NASCAR race. That's number one who they're going to blame for not wearing masks. Yeah. Everybody had a mask on. Yeah. Everybody was wearing a mask. Uh, All of our photos, we don't have masks. <laughs> so, well, we were the problem. Yeah. We came in their world, and we were the problem. Uh, if we took pictures. We we didn't wear a mask. That's right. But uh, we wore masks. Or we wore ours, and it was uh, it was an awesome, awesome time. Uh, it was a fun weekend. Uh, the new bus was good. Slept in the bunks with the with the people amongst the regular folk, <laughs> and uh, that was good. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. That's it. Uh, yeah, wear, yeah, wear your jacket next next week. Okay, yeah. it's a good jacket. I like that you would have your own. You have your own ads, and you're doing some side deal, <laughs> and you because you're on the podcast. I like you just randomly. I see you come in. You know, you got a man. He's mentioning derail. Bush Light a lot today. Yeah. You got a derail battery hat on. I'm like, that's kind of crazy. I've never seen one of those hats. You're like, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, just something I've been wearing. Yeah. Like a Dippin' Dot shirt. I'm like, where'd you get that <laughs> shirt at? <laughs> and you're like, how much? Then he works it into the conversation. Yeah. yeah. You go, speaking you know of what? the future. Yeah, speaking of the future. <laughs> the future yeah. of ice cream, Dippin' Dots. <laughs> and then we don't know. You're just you're just rich and loaded on the side. You start show you pull up in a Ferrari. You're like, how'd you get that Ferrari? Yeah, because he's been doing some side work. <laughs> uh, all right. As usual, uh, we're going to start with some comments from... YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and Nate Land at NateBargetzi.com if you want to send an email in. Joshua and Caleb, two people. I remember when I was a kid and TGIF was a thing on Friday Night TV. I used to be so excited to come home and watch the best shows on TV. I feel the same way now about Wednesday mornings. You guys are the best. Uh, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua and Caleb. Uh, TGIF was a big deal. I remember TGI. That's a pretty big know. honor. I mean, they put you in with Family Matters right yep. there. Yeah, we're as good as Family Matters. What is TGIF? Is that like See, a uh, so young, programming block? Thank God it's Friday. Yeah. Yeah, that was I a know. programming <laughs> block. You were... You <laughs> know what it stands for. Yeah. He was four years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was It was a big... Friday night was a big ABC. TV night. Okay. ABC. They had Full House, mm-hmm. Family Matters, uh, <laughs> Home Improvement. No, home room was not that maybe. night. Step by step was on it, maybe. Maybe no. If I remember I mean, Family Matters. Four pretty big shows. Family Matters and Full Family House. Family Matters were, was what I was looking for. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They were both. I mean, you'd all sit and watch it. I mean, that was TV. Was I mean, that was it was the best. Dude. Urkel, Urkel still. I mean, still. That's when like that's about the last time TV shows you were. Just looking for superstars. It. Yeah. Modern Family. Eric. Eric yeah. shows. That was that's that, that, as far as the later that they got where they they became these gigantic hit 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 shows, uh, so it's awesome, very nice. Uh, Harrison Kesey, Nate, I've been a longtime fan, but I had no idea how awesome the podcast could be. I am 31 years old, and I was just dumped by the woman I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. You, Aaron, and Blueberry have gotten me through <laughs> these recently tough times, and your podcast is a true escape from our hectic and complex world. Wow. Uh, I love it. Good for you, Harrison. And you know what? You're better for it. Mm-hmm. She's out. 
You get to get back on the prowl. <laughs> you're 31. You're a young man, Harrison. Yeah. Get out there and go live it up. It's a good name, Blueberry, too. I like that. Blueberry is a great name. <laughs> Blueberry, I think, would be a funny name to say in comedy. Blueberry. Blue, you know. Welcome, uh, Blind Brian. I said Brian instead yeah. of Brian. Welcome, Brian Blueberry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just, just say Blueberry. You don't say his first name. You just ruined the whole. Well, I'd like to say Brian, too. Huh? Brian Blueberry. Everybody, please welcome Bates. to the stage. Brian Bates. Sometimes people call him Blueberry. <laughs> welcome to the stage. And then, yeah, everybody's like, that's, that's not. <laughs> Who's calling him that? Blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what if like somebody yells out, "Who's really calling him that?" <laughs> who calls him Blueberry? I'll say well, Harrison some... <laughs> Kesey. That's who. Yeah, Harrison's out there. He got he dumped. Might... <laughs> he might walk. Harrison's outside, out there hanging, out, handing out his business card. <laughs> Come to the driving show, Harrison. You walk around just peek into everybody's cars, see if there's a nice lady in there. <laughs> I don't know. Is that how you do it? I haven't dated in a long time. Concession stand is where it's at. That's where it's at, Harrison. Come sit up by the concession stand. You see some girls. Get them some nice... You, you, you uh, like pretzels? How you doing, ma'am? You want some popcorn? Pretzels? <laughs> what are you in for? These concession stands are regular yeah. prices. Maybe Dippin' Dots. See what they Dippin got. Dippin' Dots? How you doing? <laughs> Dippin' yeah. Dots. Dippin' Dots has been around for a long time. I am a big fan. The dude. one thing, too, the concession stand prices are really reasonable. I mean, it, for a reasonable. date, if you're yeah. like, I mean, this is like the best thing in the world. If you're like, it, the food has been good at a lot of these places. I love concession stand food, so we've eaten a lot of it. I love concession stand burgers. Uh, every one of them I've liked. Every burger. We were I, eating a concession stand burger, and Nate just goes, "I think this is my favorite restaurant." <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. It is my. They're my favorite burgers. I, I, it, it's to the point. It's like, "Hey, doing? We're how you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm cheeseburger. Right to the point. Not a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> yeah. It's like a uh, pleasure to meet you. Like it. I love it. We had some fries that were really good. Oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that had almost a hint of a popcorn. Yeah, it's a very like because concession stand food is. It's got the French fries with little like if you went to a nice restaurant, little little taste might taste a little popcorn because that's popcorn's cooked right next to that those fries, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'd I like to try it's that. A hint of popcorn butter, yeah, on the French fries, and that's because the they're made in the same thing. And that's because one guy left, and so now we the guy that has the popcorn has to do fries too because we uh, he <laughs> they only have fired. one set of tongs. So the, we had to use like that's everything. the story behind. I, there's a little hint of popcorn butter in the fries. Oh, why is that? Uh, we had a guy try to uh, beat up another coworker. We had to fire him, so now we only have one person working both stands, and his hands get they have butter on it, and he also messes with the fries, and so it combines a great butter fry taste. And you're like, okay, that's like a redneck nice restaurant. Oh. <laughs> That's the story behind every, you know, because all the real restaurants. Well, that's the there. story behind the cake we had. We mm. had that cake that was like, it was an accident, and now it's like a crazy popular cake. The big cake. St. Louis cake was, yeah, they, someone put butter, someone the cooked gooey a gooey butter cake, it was called. Gooey butter cake, and someone cooked a cake wrong, and now St. Louis is famous for it. And then, you know, yeah, and it was unbelievable. And I didn't think I was going to like it. I'm always not, sometimes I like, I like sweet stuff. I, I love Sour Patch Kids, and I love ice cream. That's like my world. I'm not a big, I don't get too crazy in dessert. Yeah. I'm not a just whatever dessert, let's try it. And I thought this could be too much, and it was just right. It was nice. Mm-hmm. They know what they're doing. Aaron and I got into a debate about why popcorn is yellow. Oh, uh, yeah. And he says it's because of the butter. But I'm like, you put the butter on it after, after. it pops. Louisville gave us a giant sack, like a Santa Claus bag of clothes filled with popcorn. And we were also debating how long it could be. If he could, if Aaron could eat it in 24 hours. He said 48 hours. I said 24. I was <laughs> yeah. To go. So the problem, just so everybody knows, because everybody wants this Krispy Kreme challenge. And everybody, you know, we weren't doing it because Aaron didn't want to do it. But Aaron f- throws out how much you, like for how much Aaron makes us feel bad, but I don't be eating a bunch of donuts. Aaron's go to in any situation is how quick do you think I can eat that? And that's if anything pops up that's a lot of food. What do you, how, many, how long do you think it take me to eat that? So Aaron, I think you want to eat it. And oh, you of want course to I do want it. to, but I'm just think, choosing not to for my own health. Uh yeah, but you said that in if you if you see it, we'll post a picture of it on the Nayland social. It's in the video that you it's put in the, up. Oh, okay. That, that, yeah, I mean it. it it's, it's a, a large it's a, bag. it's a, it was a, it was a ridiculous. It's Comically just like the I left hit, spot. Yeah. I hit Brian with that bag. Uh, there's yeah. there's one photo somewhere of yeah. like me. 
putting it on them. Nick suggested we do an eating contest on the bus, and we're like, Nick, we don't have a bathroom. Yeah, that's yeah. the hard thing. Mm. You can't, you know, you, there's a bathroom, but there's not a bathroom. On the bus. <laughs> bathroom, bathroom. And uh, Nick's lactose intolerant, so uh, the whole table <laughs> asked for no cheese when Nick. Well, said that's that. what caused it because Nick wanted to eat some of the popcorn, and I was like, well, there's a lot. Of, be careful. There's a lot of butter on there. Yeah. And Brian was like, is there? And I go, yeah, that's why it's yellow. And right? he he thought just some popcorn yeah. just is it's yellow. I that's thought popcorn the color. would be yellow. Just that's the I color take, of it. I mean, I guess you could have white. There's white popcorn. There's white popcorn, and it's yellow, but but you could. It's, there's a distinct butter yellow. So when you put up, but I don't put butter on my popcorn. There you was like French fry seasoning no, in it that gets your popcorn. hands gross. It does. Yeah. But, so when you pop yeah. popcorn and there's just a kernel and it pops and it's yellow, there's already butter in that kernel. No, but it's a different kind of yellow once they put the butter on it. You don't think there's butter on that popcorn? I don't ever put it on popcorn, and mine's as yellow as... I think my popcorn is always yellow. I never go... But you may have butter seeds. I think some of them will be, like, soaked in butter. The seeds are soaked in butter. (laughs) I think so. Like Uh, in the corn patch. Maybe. 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 I mean, honestly, that could be because... So a guy walks out and just shaving butter off (laughs) in the farm... But when you get microwavable popcorn, they'll be like butter or no butter, and they're all kernels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they ask you that to pour it on after. They're not like choosing one or other. I just can't imagine that you take something yellow like butter and put it on something. It doesn't make the thing more yellow. You don't see. Then you would see it turn yellow. We would notice that. It'd be like you'd be like, oh no, have you ever seen them make popcorn? Like you, we'd be. You would have seen it at some point. You'd go watch it as a, as a school kids. Watch this. Watch Still this popcorn trip. turn yellow. Uh, I, I mean, those are all good points. Caitlin Blanchard, I will personally sponsor the, this podcast if you please dedicate an episode to Nate trying to pronounce words. I'm only eight <laughs> minutes in listening to Nate trying to read the comments, and I'm for real crying. Caitlin gets it. That's the yeah. <laughs> just sponsor us, Caitlin. You they might already be sponsoring yeah. Aaron. <laughs> yeah, that's what they yeah. <laughs> You've had a pretty good episode so far. So far, I've done pretty say, good. Yeah, Caitlin rolling. Blanchard sounds like someone that would give you a hat. That would be Blanchard. Sound <laughs> like a NASCAR name. Yeah, Blanchard. The Blanchard, Blanchard family. Chandler Shaw. Nate's back and forth with Nick's. With Nick proves his own hypothesis that if you say something with confidence, people will believe you. Also, Bam Bam over there needs to wear a hat. The line, the light shining off the forehead <laughs> is blinding. Love the Bam show. Bam. Keep doing a good job. Oof. You think people watch this show on TV and they go, "Hey, turn the uh, turn the brightness down a little bit," and they go, "Oh, it's all the way down. <laughs> the TV's off." Oh wow. You think when they, if they watch our episode and they, and they turn the TV off from our thing, it's your where you sit is the last thing that goes dark. <laughs> is that possible? It's burned in. It is very. It just the last. Everybody can go. TV's off, and Bates was sitting right there. Uh, I'll tell you what. It is so fun that there's just a different nickname for each comment yeah. <laughs> for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're catching on to it. Uh, <laughs> Smith B. Morgan, honestly, just thankful Nate said what I was thinking. Obviously, a non-sports fan writing that article about Manti Tail. If it says the ESPN award show, I love that there's something left in the world that isn't just people ranting at each other about serious things. Thank you, Smith B. Morgan. That is true. I'm glad that, yeah, that's the ESPN award show. That is crazy. And that was an ESPN article, as someone said. Uh, I, I said that, and I yeah. did a little research, and as I suspected, they were right. It was not the Heisman award show. It was the ESPN award show, where they give out the awards for all the different top wide receiver, top linebacker. Uh, top so it wasn't a Heisman award no. show. That's why his phone is on. Mm, what's your source? ESPN. The ESPN Award Show people? I don't know about mm-hmm. that. Never <laughs> seen it. Never heard of it. Why are they showing that? There's there's an ESPN Awards? Yeah, the Home Depot ESPN. You know, where they give out all the awards yeah. except the Heisman. So not so, the yeah, fun I don't stuff. Know about that. The ESPYs you're talking yeah. about. No. Yeah. Did, am I the only I sports know. fan here? Yeah, I, <laughs> geez, you that is like an obscure, like, look, so you want an ESPY? No, it, it's an ESPN Award. My source is Manti Teo, who on a Dr. Phil interview. Or Katie Couric, one of those. He said he was at the Heisman ceremony. Okay. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but that's that's what I think. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Uh, I think you owe ESPN an apology. <laughs> ESPN, I'm sorry. For their award show. They're like, finally, someone's listening. <laughs> Our award shows does real good. The ESPN award show. Uh, I was thinking about, like, you could, if you want to make yourself sound 
I was thinking this this is I was thinking about this as a joke. It won't be in this act, but for the next act uh that I come up with. But like you can make anything sound like you're like someone, you know, we're, you know, I was the first comedian to perform on late night since the pandemic. Like that sounds awesome. But like how much can you say that you you could say that about anybody that anybody anything that anybody does? Not even comedic or it could be regular job stuff. And you could put mm-hmm. that to be like, wow, that's that's the first impressive. mechanic to go back on the yeah. line after that. <laughs> yeah, I was the first mechanic. Like you could word it to go some guy that on the janitor at Ford. He goes, I was the first guy. I knew I had to be the first guy back since this pandemic. And I started us going back. And you're like, well, did you? And you go, I don't know. I just opened the I had the keys <laughs> and there was a line behind me and I was the first one to go in. Well, if you any- could make anything sound yeah. where you're like, wow, dude. Like you say, you could make yourself sound you like you you should be in a history book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For any situation. For any situation. You could just be. And if any of you guys want to market that, you could put it on Aaron's jacket. <laughs> So well, uh, the first first guy, he's the first person in history to wear that drive in theater show jacket <laughs> on the Nate Lane podcast. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Since and the, a bush hat. Yeah. Maybe the, the first person, there's a chance first person in history to ever wear that combination on earth. Yep. If it's ever lived, you could be the only one. I bet that's true. I think so, dude. And yeah. then when you factor in the sizes and stuff too, you, yeah. can, you can get really specific. You're the only person in history. And there's some guy at home wearing all that going, oh, this is a guy. I've been wearing this since the 90s. <laughs> Just I imagine a guy sitting in his recliner. <laughs> he's got that hat on, that jacket. <laughs> Nick, you're the first recurring guest on the Nate Land Podcast. Feels good. I know. You'd be the last, too. Uh, <laughs> Kristen Sundermeyer, why do you wear headphones during the show when you are all sitting in the same room? Mm. That's Inquiring a good minds question. want to know. I, a, we can hear the mics. And that's good. So you can tell when you're, if you're getting too far away and too, because that, that helps to know like, Hey, I'm, I'm getting too quiet versus I like, I like hearing it's able, it's easy to really hear everybody. You don't miss anything. Even the little subtle kind of line. I'm not sure I pick up on that. I don't think you pick up on a lot, but <laughs> it's, I, uh, but it feels like pro. I, I like it. feels the, pro. I think the main, I like it because it feels pro. You feel, yeah, you feel I think like, it keeps you in your, this world too. So when you're coming out and doing a show and this is a show, it makes us feel also you were in this. I'm not distracted by, you know, where, where at my house is there a door going to open? Is Holly walking around? Like yeah. you, nothing distracts you. You kind of just, you feel very much in the zone of the show. Mm-hmm. No, you do not need headphones. And some people w- don't wear them. I've always liked wearing them. And but the main reason I liked it at the beginning was I do think they look cool. And that was the only reason. Yeah, it's a professional. It's, it's a professional also like makes thing. it so like you can't check your phone while you have headsets on. No. Hello. <laughs> I'm doing a podcast. You're like, they're uh, not even plugged in. You know how long it took me to look for these headphones? I mean, when I got them, I mean, I, do, I, I dive in. It's a nightmare. I ordered some other ones, and then I went back to this one. These were the ones that are most used in podcasts. I mean, it was a whole thing. See, C- CCM1, can Mick become a permanent addition to the podcast? He is awesome. Mick, what do you think? I would love it. I would love it. He lives in uh, California, so he's not going to do that. But if he was here, yeah, if Nick moves here, that seat's always there for him. We got to talk my wife in, my French bulldog. Yep. And then we'll see. We'll get them down here. I'll, I'll talk. Get, I'll talk to Till. I'll start working Till. You may work. <laughs> yeah, work. I can it. work Till. <laughs> you you got to talk your dog into it. Yeah, the dog <laughs> too. She's you know. She gets it. She likes to go down uh, and walk the Chinese theater. Uh, yeah. She likes to see Robert Redford star every day. <laughs> That's where she goes <laughs> to the bathroom. It'd be all right. Barbershop Hardy <laughs> Society. Here we go. Not sure if it's considered a hoax since we didn't let it go on for days on in. But for April Fool's 2019, we at the Barbershop Harmony Society announced that in January 2022, we would be hosting our annual midwinter event in Nome, Alaska. We created an event logo, had a webpage with hotel information, and released a teaser video. We knew the staff would get calls once the announcement went live, so we presented the info at an all-staff meeting the day before. And there were cheers. When we told them this was an April Fool's joke, there was an Audible grunting. You would think the fact that Gnome is only accessible by plane and dog sled 
let alone the notion of Alaska in January would be a dead giveaway. But we still got calls. So they did a whole thing. And I mean, people were like, oh, great. We're going to Nome, Alaska. Yeah. I would have loved it if somebody made it. You know, they were like, if they I'm go here. to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, that's very funny to do it. Like you sometimes when you try to go, let's make it obvious. But the thing is, it's like, yeah, you can't even get to Nome. You're like, that's what makes people want to go. Yeah. Because yeah. they're like, well, I want to go because you can't go there. That's funny. You know who lived in Nome? Sid Finch. Oh, he's from there. Do you know that? <laughs> I heard there. that. Yeah. Patrick Moss. Is this P, P. Moss? I, I, I went to, I grew up uh, with a Patrick Moss. We went to Western Kentucky together. I'm not sure if this is him. P. Moss, he's Mr. Everything. He played football for, I believe, Nashville Christian and was the, I mean, quarterback, run, running back. <laughs> like, uh, he kicked as well, was the punter. They didn't have a lot of people on the team. They didn't. He was always, uh, he, he, there was an article, he's called Mr. Everything. And I would call him that every day. That's, every time I still talk to him, I go, Mr. Everything. What can he not do? He can do everything. Uh, 100,000 babies born every minute would be 144 million babies a day, Nick. Uh, this doesn't <laughs> already sound like pa Patrick, my Patrick yeah. Ball. So I don't think he's going to be looking this stuff up. <laughs> At that rate, it would take roughly 53 days to produce 7.59 billion human beings, as many as are currently on Earth. Nick, Nate, Aaron, Bright Eyes, love the show. Yeah, so I was right on this baby thing. You guys are lunatics. Yeah. In lunatics. hindsight. Well, how many people are dying a day? <laughs> yeah, that's... I mean, I mean what, you want to go? <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Y'all go. Y'all go. You're going to... You all think 85,000 to 100,000. I'd say 800 now. 800 people die a day. So there's there's a population. No, no, a day, decline. a day, a day. In the world. A day? Out what, of Nick, out of, out of, I was saying a minute, 800 day. Oh, is it a day? There is population gro growth. You know, oh, 600 a day. A day. He's a saying day. a day. And 256 a minute. Okay. Well, let's stick That's with, how many do you think are dying a minute? How many people do you think die a minute? Why? Well, I, don't, I don't think it's. 80? Okay, that's yeah, pretty good. I mean, I don't, uh, if 250 are born, or we really reined ourselves in. From yeah, 100, yeah. 000. I was 100,000 before. People, my wife is like, I don't know if I want to be married to you uh, with that kind of answer. So wow. I'm, I'm going. No, she didn't say that. I don't even know. Let's say 100 and no one went with me. 115 <laughs> died a minute. There's no way you, you just saw that, didn't you? No, I didn't. I did not look at it. All right, we'll have to replay to see if he glanced. Go look at it. Go glance. I've not looked at I it. I still as can't right see now. it. I'm looking 120. at it. 120. I think Nick wanted to guess, but... Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. He I, did I guess. said 80. He said 80. Okay. 120. 120. I said 115. Good job. That's well I did done. not look. You can look at the camera. If you're watching this, you have to turn to look. This is where I have to, would have to do to look. So 256 born... A minute. So we're doubling twi or more than twice mm. as many are born than dying. Mm. That's not good. John Whitebread, 100,000 babies born a day suggests that each, each woman of a childbearing age would need to produce about 28 babies a year and roughly 700 over her lifetime. <laughs> the exponential growth implied by such a birth rate would be positively goofy. <laughs> Nick and Aaron's <laughs> lack of understanding of even basic math <laughs> is deeply concerning. Okay. I mean, I, uh, John ooh. Whitebread. Wow. Do you want to host this show? Because you're now my favorite. I mean, what a, put Aaron in place. I refuse to believe that John Whitebread was crunching those numbers in his head as he's listening. He had the benefit of sitting down with a calculator. And he oh, all this stuff that's up. crazy. Well, yeah, John you know what I mean? And why is it deeply concerning? We're not mathematicians. John Whitebread went bombs. to... We love your name, Whitebread. Went to Florida State, which is Notre Dame's biggest robbery. <laughs> yes, uh, that's correct. <laughs> that's what Nick said this weekend. Notre Dame, Florida State. Uh, or big last rap. weekend they played. Notre Charlie Dame, Florida State Ward. Played. He goes, it's a big robbery game for us. <laughs> Notre Dame, Florida State. You know everybody that watches the Notre Dame, Florida State robbery <laughs> game every year. Uh, John Whitebread gets it, dude. I mean, the way he goes, the exponential growth it implied is by such a birth rate would be positively goofy. <laughs> That's <laughs> goofy's a wonderful word. You're goofy. Calling something that is goofy. Nick and Aaron's lack of understanding of even basic mathematics. That is good. Is de deeply concerning. Wow.
You two should be ashamed of yourself. Concerned. That is goofy. White bread sounds like a made up name for you, though, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it going for blueberry white bread. <laughs> Ashley Jones, Aaron saying he didn't want the pig to be brave going in to die made me laugh so hard. Like a pig thinking he's essentially Bruce Willis and Bruce Willis in Armageddon has stuck with me all day. That is funny to think of it. Yeah, that's Just good to hear because that joke bombed so bad that I thought Nate was going to kick me off the podcast. Yeah, no, 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 you did all right. I'll let you get one in. The next one, yeah, and we're going to have a talk downstairs. Uh, but no, that was uh, that is funny. I don't think I paid it. I don't think I paid attention to it. But Ashley Jones, she did. She did. Apparently, she likes bad comedy. Uh, Jason Fisher. <laughs> I'm sure Berates is relieved. Mick is the current punching bag of Nate Land is not looking forward to him leaving the show. Correct. <laughs> they want you to stay, Nick. Yeah, Please I, li- stay. I like that. Mick is is passing along too yeah. instead of Nick. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, we're gonna call you Mick. It happens. Chris Nini. Did they? Oh, he did he, that. He did that. Yeah. Because I would have said Nini. I would have said Nini. I think. Nini. Hey, Nate, I was at your show on September 26th in Ocean, Oceanport, New Jersey, the one where their fire alarm went off at the beginning of your set. I thought you handled it like a champ, pushing right through and telling us to all completely ignore it. Anyway, it got me wondering, what is the most surprising, distracting, obtrusive thing that happened during one of your shows? Love everything about the podcast besides Breadbasket. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> stay safe. Good night, America! <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, that's so that, great. It's just such a nice email. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, and he's like, just, oh, by the way, I like everybody except Brian. <laughs> yeah. It's just a rough end. Big yeah. fan of the show. Love your stand up except Bread Basket. <laughs> All right, I'll get out of here. Good night. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, the show, I had another fire alarm uh, go off. I think I talked about it. At, we were in Seattle. Seattle. You were there with me. That was. Uh, Two versions. One, well, one the week before it was back to back weekends, which was crazy. Week before at um, where was it? Hunts uh, mm-hmm. out Birmingham. Birmingham. Uh, what is it? Called? Stardome. Stardome. At the Stardome, fire alarm goes off. Nobody gets up. We just continue the show. No one bats an eye. Not a big deal. Shows going on. Nothing's happening. So you just kind of talk during it. The police came or the fire department came and they got it shut off and that was it. We never, no one ever left their seats. There was no sense of urgency. <laughs> urgency. Then next week in uh, Seattle, that cl- uh, what's that club called? Bellevue in uh, Bellevue, Washington. Yeah. Uh, I forget parlor. The parlor. The Parlor Live. Great club. I might have closed. I don't know if it's closed. I, I think it closed. I think it closed. It was a great club. And uh, so we, I'm on stage. And I mean, I've got, I'm probably 30 minutes in fire alarm goes off. This one's in a mall. So they, we all have to leave. So during the show, I'm now, I went from on stage to walking downstairs with the audience. And it was like a, a long way. A long it was way. like yeah. six flights up where I was top. like, <laughs> single yeah. file, Jerry, single file. Jerry. <laughs> I didn't want to go all the yeah. way. I think, I don't think we actually went all the way down. We did go all the way down. Uh, I did. I mean, you probably maybe, maybe I did. <laughs> yeah, maybe I just. I went. It. Yeah, Level four. I went all the way down. We stood outside with everybody, and oh, then yeah, went we back did. upstairs and did the show again. And then everybody came back. Everybody's yeah. talking I, to yeah. us I, while we're. In. I was like, "Can you believe everybody came back? These people love comedy." And he goes, "We have all their credit cards." I go, "Okay." <laughs> uh, I thought it was like, you know what? These fans came out. They're not leaving. And then we have every one of their credit cards. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, because you think people would, would yeah. bail, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and then I had to come back and do 20, 25 minutes. Is there a real fire? No, no, no just a fire alarm. But oh. it's but you, you there's no... It was just a great time to do it on a Saturday night. Like, let's just try this fire Sold alarm. Out, 10 o'clock. Comedy club. Yeah. I mean, just brutal. And then and you have to go back up and do time, which is, you know, just such a weird thing to get, to get back into the jokes. Like, but you killed when you, get, when you got back. It was... Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Uh, you had some car alarms this weekend. Car alarms went off. Trains. Trains. Yeah, I had a couple car alarms. Uh, so far, the best train has been Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland. That was the best. to literally where I'm in a two minute bit and I start and I'm talking, but I can't hear myself talk. So yeah. I just I'm like, am I actually talking yeah. or is just my mouth like ah? ah, ah. Yeah. And then you just yourself. get done. 
and you're like, okay, everyone's still okay. Like you, you just don't know at the end of it. That's the train is just so loud. So close. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, we had the core alarm went off. Oh yeah, I, there was a funny line in the yeah. It was very funny this weekend. Yeah, uh, we'll probably hopefully better post it. I post we're posting the one the first fire alarm that went off in uh, Butler, PA, and then so I, I had a joke about that, and so I think that's posting this week on my social. Nicole Patterson. I went to high school with a kid named John Doe, but it was pronounced like Doe. So she was John D O. Dude, it was pronounced like Doe. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's almost like it'd be a good trick. He just spells it a little bit off, but he goes, it's pronounced Doe. John Do. John Doe. <laughs> uh, Dustin, that's great. Dustin Bogger. Boger. Boger. Thank you, Brian. Finally, someone on the show said what everyone's listening already knew. Aaron really isn't that smart. Brian actually said Aaron isn't a genius. That's right. He's just smarter than us. Even that gives Aaron too much credit. Once an episode, he knows something Nate and Brian do not. Every episode, Aaron shows how little he knows Amen. by displaying his difficulty in grasping simple topics. I love everyone on the show and what you're all doing. I hope Nick just moves in and stays on the show. Uh, he might. Till's not a yeah. Till's going to divorce Nick, and then he's going to be living here with us. Uh, yeah, that makes sense, man. You're 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 like a. We can't, the delicate genius. What is that from? Uh, Seinfeld. Seinfeld, yeah. We can't. Disturb the delicate genius. The delicate genius. Aaron's so much smarter, but he doesn't know how to just walk around everyday life. <laughs> and that's what this person gets. Dustin and. Well, he's saying he's not smarter. Well, I'm saying that I still think he's smart, but like he's. Yeah, it's that. He's, he can't grasp simple topics. He knows about Monteteo, though. Yeah. Is that an Indian? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mata. Yeah. Mata Teo. Mata Teo. Old Native American. Yeah. He just played <laughs> it, that casino. It is so hard to say uh, that name. What did you just say? Mata. Mateo. Mateo. Mateo Teo. Mateo. Mata. Yeah. Mata. Mata Teo. Mata. Mata Teo. Mata Teo. Mata Teo. The Teo family. Uh, they came in Mata. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, can you hear me, Mattel? Mattel? Uh, that's what he says. That's what they would. That's the joke they would do in Notre Dame's locker room. Hey, can you hear me, Mattel? Mattel? And you know, people loved it. Uh, oh, it was yeah. mean though, you know. And then he had a fake girlfriend. I never called myself a genius. I want to make that clear. That's true. That's no, not a title give I gave that vibe. myself. Uh, I haven't I mean, heard it, this. It got genius. to my head pretty quickly, but I never, I yeah. never originally said it. I I haven't heard any of this genius talk around. Yeah, he's because he he said it very early. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've been talking about this. I, you know, just out of deference and respect for you, I'm not gonna. <laughs> he's not bringing the full on. Uh, right. <laughs> he always holds back a little bit. Mm -hmm. he's, he's like a golfer when they said, "You ever swing full speed?" They go, I "Never do full speed." Dustin Johnson said, "I've never swung full speed. Eighty-five percent's the most. We only get eighty-five percent of Aaron. <laughs> he won't give us the full hundred. Notre Dame stats, though. Boom, he's he's hitting us with ninety-three. Yeah. If you want to talk about Matata, I can't <laughs> talk about it. Matati. Matati. Lewis it taps. When Bubblegum says Colorado instead of Colorado. Colorado. I noticed that too. Yeah, Colorado. I say some words wrong as well. Uh, yeah, that's a real Southern. Yeah. Colorado. There's another one that's super Southern. My dad says it. Uh, I can't think of them right now. There's a tornado. Tornado? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a tornado coming. Tornado. Mm -hmm. Aaron would say tornado. I imagine your family said a tornado. When in Alabama, were y'all, you know, were you- Shunned? Yeah. Were, like, did you- I don't hear that Were you the, the family Alabama. that when they go, hey, there's a tornado warning, you go, it's tornado warning. And- <laughs> Get the penguins in. And then in. you would explain what it is. My dad's family, none of them have Southern accents. They're from Alabama. Because your brother went to is it went to Notre Dame too, and your dad. My, my older brother, my older sister, and my dad. Yeah, every your whole family went to Notre Dame. My younger brother did not. What Where did he, he do? Yeah. He went to Purdue. Wow. Ooh. I mean, come on. That's a rival. That's a rival. I know. Notre Dame, Purdue. <laughs> That's a rival. That is that is right up there. I don't. Drew Brees. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. You watched. I feel like you've watched football one day, and then you saw these games, and then they just stuck with you that they're rivals, and that's, that's it. That and is. And you have never, you've never continued to watch football. You watched it one day, 
And then from that, that's all your information on of football and what's going all, on. All of my information on baseball, football it is literally from 1992 to 1998. <laughs> I Here we go Chipper tonight, Jones. big game, New York Giants, <laughs> Seattle Seahawks. Every year they meet. Uh, just some weird, like. So you're, I mean, Purdue, it's unbelievable. that That's an unbelievably hard school to get into, too. It's a good school, yeah. Yeah. Smart but why did family. he choose the only one? He just couldn't get in? I don't know. I don't know what went into it. I mean, I, I, I think if you can get into Purdue, you could get into Notre Dame. Yeah. I think that no, was more no. of like, I'm going to show you. Right? I think Aaron knows what know. happened. He just don't want to say. Tell us your family uh, <laughs> secrets. <laughs> this, uh, I think if you can get into Purdue, you can get Notre Dame, right? Purdue's a... I don't know. I don't no, know. You know. You can't. Yeah. You, don't, you know. can't. I don't you know. know. Yeah. It's a good no. engineering school. I like that you're – so if you are making fun of uh, – I knew it was an engineering school. Yeah. Uh, but if you're if you're making fun of your brother for being dumb, I – you're he went to Purdue. And that's y'all's running joke at the family. Like, <laughs> oh, the dumb guys here went to Purdue. Went to an actual university. Do you know how stupid everybody else would feel? Like, I couldn't even get into a community college. <laughs> And y'all are like, oh, here comes the Purdue. Do you know anything? <laughs> and then y'all, what do y'all talk about it, it around the dinner table? Drew Brees. Spot scientist stuff? He's... Y'all do like how to cut a turkey angle-wise? Do y'all do it like a perfect way? You bring out a protractor yeah. to cut the turkey? I mean, are y'all the smartest family in, no. uh, on, in the no. world? No. In Alabama? In Alabama? No, dude. We're, no, we're not. You know? He'll still just, wear that we're... jacket, the bush jacket, you know, every now and again. Do you call your dad sense. father? Do you say father and mother? <laughs> no, I say dad. You go father, mother. Father. Good mother, can you pass? Mother the, dear. Mother dear. <laughs> Did you have a nanny? Did you have help? No. Did y'all have help? No. <laughs> Look no, at I, that I, face. I did, I did. Look at that face. Nate questions this. We didn't. Man. If I drove to your parents' house, does that mean it's going to be just, it's just like a, what is it a house that's like an architect? It's like glass. It's like the one that sticks out. That's like glass, and you're like, his dad's an architect. That's the no, house he tried out. No, dude, it's just a house he in built the it neighborhood. Himself. His dad's a principal. They did a Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah. Your dad's a principal. That documentary starting to sound pretty good. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're getting down to the bottom of it. I mean, everybody's the smartest human being on earth, and you're. Uh, all right, we're. Uh, you know, Dostre. So Nick says unbelievable way more than Nate does. Also, this is the only episode where the term unbelievable would be used appropriately and almost never is. <laughs> yeah, I like that, that you say unbelievable a lot. You brought some unbelievable to it. I say it a ton. I try not to say it. Unbelievable. I didn't know I said it. It's, uh, it's funny, though. We did an episode on hoaxes, and yeah. he says <laughs> unbelievable was never yeah. mentioned. Yeah, that's the time. <laughs> I well, Y'all got in my head, in me head, and I'm trying to not say it. I'm doing that uh, like, too. I say like a lot. I and know. Uh, I actually kind of started trying to get that out. I don't think I'm going to get it out for this uh, special, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get it out for after that. Hmm. Kendra, Kendra L. Hi, folks. When Balloon Boy happened, I was at work, and we had the TV on, and after about five minutes of watching, I stood up, said it was totally fake, and walked out of the room. My boss told me I was a heartless monster <laughs> and said we should all be praying for you, this poor kid. So that was awkward for him in the end. Anyway. Love the show and very much looking forward to hearing what you, Aaron, Booklet, and Mick are generally confused about in the world. <laughs> You're Mick now. I love it. Yeah, uh, it's stuck. It's stuck. It's in. Mick. And then, yeah, that's I love that too, like to say it's fake and then it's not. That's great. That's great. You are heartless. A um, heartless monster. That is a, that's getting after it. Two more. CJ, it's been three weeks since I've mentioned this and Nate is still not following Aaron on Twitter. What did you do, Aaron? I can't understand his tweets because they're too high educational. <laughs> it's all Purdue talk. Yeah. I tweet in Latin, actually. Yeah. So it's a tough follow. Uh, I, follow I think I follow you on Instagram. I'll follow you on Twitter. I, no, I don't have Twitter I'm, on my phone. I'm, me either. So, so I, uh, I haven't gone through and followed anybody else in a while. But I'll, I'm going to do it. Uh, and I'm going to unfollow you on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so one's got to go. One's got to come. Gerald McCormick, not sure if it would be considered a hoax or an urban legend, but I'd love to hear your guys' take on Bigfoot. So uh, wow. here we go. We lead into it. Uh, well, we are going to do – so this week we are going to do urban le uh, some urban legends and just scary stories, you know, little – even though it's two weeks for Halloween stuff. And then next week uh, we will be playing a show that we uh, – uh, one that we already taped uh, that is about Bigfoot. We actually brought a guest in and talked a lot about – 
Bigfoot, and uh, it's a fun episode. And so next, Did you bring uh, in like a Bigfoot historian. Yeah, yeah, and Bigfoot, the actual <laughs> Bigfoot came in. He was. He said, "I would love. To, I would love to do it." The guy from that uh, museum that's seven <clears throat> feet tall. Yeah. yeah. And so next, because next week I will be in uh, Los Angeles taping my special uh, on the 29th. So uh, I, I will be gone from, I won't be back until, so the next, next one we record will be November where we have comments. Next week won't have comments, but next week's a new episode, Bigfoot. It's a good one. It was but, a good episode. Yeah. But still leave comments and we'll read them in two weeks. We'll read them in two weeks. Uh, so leave them. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get started with these urban legends. That's a lot of comments right there. A long one. Uh, yeah. so, all right, let's talk about some urban legends. We watched, uh, we were talking about Halloween. Cause you said there's one with Halloween. Uh, one of the coolest things we have done on this tour, I think is, uh, we watched Halloween one on the drive-in and that's where we took that big bag of popcorn and where was this? Was the Louisville, Louisville. Yeah. yeah, the Louisville yeah. one. You remember the name of that? Uh, Sourback family. Sourback yeah. family. Yeah. Drive in. Awesome, awesome. They were family. cool. Great family. We met his whole family, and they, uh, we, they, he goes, y'all want to watch a movie? And we're like, and they, we played Halloween. It was kind of cold. We have, we have some chairs. We set chairs out just in a gravel parking lot by ourselves, mm-hmm. yeah. and had a little radio, and we watched the movie just sitting alone. I mean, it was one of the coolest things uh, that I've got to do since doing comedy. And and who was it? Mike, uh, who's a videographer, who's, who's with us yeah. on, on the on the road. The homeless he, pimp. The homeless pimp. Follow him on stuff. The homeless pimp doing all the great videos yeah. and photos. So he he said, because I, I left early, I was cold. I go on the bus. And he was like, there was like a random car that would, like had a light. Like yes. we're watching Halloween in an empty, giant lot nothing and there's but just woods. like mm-hmm. there's just a random car like it was almost like a nothing but woods and trees around us and there and we see a it's a cop car or a security car that's got that light and he's shining it spotlight spotlight yeah, yeah. looking in into the trees pretty scary pretty scary to be we're watching a show that halloween where the guy is shining mm-hmm. lights and it was you know it was something yeah it's pretty wild that it, it definitely added to it uh yeah and it was because like that's what we're doing so we're if we're spending the night at all these drive-ins you know we're on these tour buses and we usually leave ricky our bus driver uh usually comes you know anywhere from depending on how long the drive is two to five a.m and then we go to sleep on the bus and you wake up in the next town so you i mean we get kind of locked in for that drive-in and we're just kind of there all night and yeah. all these drive-ins by ourselves so it's very, been very cool we watch Halloween, which I think has an urban legend in it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some basis of truth to it. There's a couple of uh, serial killers that they think Mike Michael Myers may be based on. One is uh, was nicknamed the Coed Killer. His name is Ed Kemper. He was six foot nine. He was a certified genius with an IQ of one forty five. Wow, that could be you. I uh, thought you were taller than you were. Is too, this, is, this, a- is this story hidden a little too close to home? Man? <laughs> yeah. Are we? Are parents, we bad? Are we knocking? Where when you said you were it? six feet tall, I was like, I was thinking he was like six three or something. I was like, oh, because it, it, part of me thought he you're could six have played football. feet exactly. Uh, I, no, I, I about, you're taller than that. No, I'm about six I, feet. See, I would have no. thought he was like six three, six four. My I, head, I was like, he was a great football player. Yeah, uh, went to Notre Dame. He's yeah. a smart. He's too smart for football. <laughs> His family looked down on it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because that's Neanderthals. Purdue could have played. Yeah, yeah, Purdue could have got in. One of the best rivalries in all of all of football. Drew Brees, uh, Drew Brees, Notre Dame. Purdue. <laughs> could you name another Purdue player? That's tough. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like there's a tight end out there. Didn't Jim Gaffigan play at Purdue? Did no, he? he uh, I think he, did he go to Purdue. I don't oh. think he played. I think he played football at Purdue. I think he played football, but I didn't think he played at Purdue. I thought he went to a uh, smaller. Purdue school is like the school where you get like a big white tight end. Where you're like, where'd he go? Well, right. Purdue. Yeah. He was. He played there. Yeah, they've never had a white tight end, but sure that's <laughs> uh, I uh, what are we looking up? Oh, Jim Gaffin played football oh. at Purdue. And was it Indiana? Georgetown. Uh. Now Georgetown is far from Florida. Look at that picture. See that picture on the yeah. bottom left? Oh, yeah. Oh, Purdue. So he did make the Purdue team. Wow. 
That's oh. pretty cool. Oh, that's fun. Oh well. Oh well. All right. Yeah. Guy. We don't. Agree All right. So, um, so anyway, this guy was a serial killer. He he killed his grandparents. I've heard of him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nate is like. Oh, no, Nate doesn't Kipper. want to talk about it. He's like, look, I I like this guy. Yeah. We don't have to. And no, I remember it. I, I I've watched something. Yeah, there was like, a Netflix series yeah. recently. Yeah, Mindhunter, right? Yep, that yeah, was it. That's, Mindhunter. Yeah. So he's one person that uh, that he could have been based on. There was another one, Stanley Styers. He was before Michael Myers <clears throat> came out is when he did his stuff. Uh, yeah, he did his stuff in the '60s. Yeah, Stanley Styers um, was born in 1912 in Iowa. Uh, however, a nurse swapped the Styer infant with another baby. Both families returned with their children. However, the other family who had the real Styers baby got into a car accident and they all died. The hospital learned what the nurse did and sh- she was sent to prison. You, are you with me so far? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, this crushed the Styers family and they descended into madness and alcoholism. Eventually, they had a baby girl named Susie. The family treated Stanley poorly and kids bullied him. He was never allowed to go trick-or-treating either. One fateful night after he was not allowed to trick-or-treat, but Susie was allowed to go to a party. Stanley finally had enough. He went on a killing spree, murdering Susie with a butcher knife, then his parents, Jeez. and even the family dog. Well, that sounds more based on yes. Michael Myers. That's almost exactly what Michael Myers did. It is. Now, there's some question whether this story is true. Yeah. Um, yeah, that seems crazy. So they, they accidentally... I mean, dude, there's got to be... Do people even know... What was that other documentary we, we talked about early on where they switched babies or... Uh, three identical strangers. Yeah, yeah. They put them all. Mm-hmm. Like how much? That was adoption though. But I mean, think about if you have a kid, you actually see the kid born, and then you later find out that's not your kid. Yeah. yeah and then crazy. just to be upset about it. I mean, how do you, as a parent? I mean, obviously these parents are not normal. That's not. It's crazy to. I what mean, mean I, not I see, normal though. If it's like you, you, you got all the babies. There's like two hundred babies in a little baby. You know, area. No, and let's I, put one here. Yeah, well, look, I think your hospital would be a nightmare. <laughs> I think if you ran a hospital, I think it would be. I think people would go in. It'd be the best run hospital great chance, in America. No, I think there'd be a great chance everybody would just have to accept. If you go there, you who knows what baby you're walking out. We of. will have all the great Notre Dame rivalry games going. <laughs> Florida yeah, State, full, full time Purdue. And then you go, and then I think, I imagine the person checks out, and then they just grab baby and go, thank you for coming to have your baby here. And he goes, is this my baby? And you go, yes, it is. And you say it confidently, and that person walks out. And then someone goes, do you think that was the right baby? And you go, I don't. I've never known. I just grab babies all day. Uh, but I, I wonder yeah, if, if that could happen. You know, I mean, yeah, how do you know? You know, it's not like they're doing something. Well, now they... There's multiple ways they make stop that from happening, right? Yeah, the babies and I guess they tag them and and mm-hmm. yeah, we branded Harper when she was born. <laughs> uh, do it at the beginning. B. Yeah, just put a big H on her back like she's in a part of a fraternity. <laughs> uh, Don't they put chips on pets now? They, they like, do. Yeah, yeah. My so dog is chip. Your kid is chipped. Yeah. Uh, that's to warm you up, so they start doing it to the humans. That's right. That's just to, to ease you. You go. Well, they're doing it. To Bill the Gates is doing it. Yeah, probably, man. Uh, so yeah, but now they, you're, yeah, they, I mean, they put a when they're born, they put the thing, I think a wristband on their feet or something, you know. But I mean, it could still, you know, yeah, it, it is, you know, it could still happen. You don't have any kind of parental intuition to tell who's kid is yours i would imagine that i bet you could feel something like yeah. you could if someone do you feel that about a dog too when you got puppies and how you're picking out you know uh seriously I'll, like where you're like this is my dog no i don't well it's kind of two different <laughs> things you're talking about just straight up pick, picking out a puppy do you can you tell yeah if it's yeah. you're if like that's this your is dog one. I don't know if I know what you're. T- so you're when you go when you go pick out a puppy, you're saying because we're talking about physically having the baby. So could a mom that delivered the baby would have? There's a sense there that they they have a connection. You're talking about just going and a guy goes, "We just had a bunch of puppies," and then you go and go, "I feel like that's my puppy. That's my puppy." Yes, that is that is just the one you like the most. Yeah. Yes. So it's, I mean, it's not exactly the same. So what if you pick out a different baby? Yes, but I mean, that's not how babies, 
<laughs> babies are not dealt like that. Not a litter. There's not a sign in a neighborhood that goes free babies, and then you go in, and you go, yeah, this woman just had eight of them, and then you go, oh, okay, I'll take a look, and you grab a couple. I feel connected to this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> there's, I think with a baby, yes, I think a mom, I think you could, you could slowly, you know, we're animals. So there's got to be, because they, uh, there's a lot of real animals that can, can turn on babies, their own babies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If something's wrong with them, if a baby's born and it's injured, they cannot build like some love towards it. Mm -hmm. Where that stand with that kid, if mm -hmm. that story was real, these people could always have, like when they're finally told that, they're probably, you know, they probably go, oh, that's not crazy to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like they, it, a lot of stuff would start clicking and going, that makes sense. I think that would happen. I think, yeah, you have a, you know, a, a, I think a mother has a special, they know. Yeah. There's something inside of them that, you know, that clicks. And mother intu is intuition, mm -hmm. mother tuition. Mother tuition. <laughs> mother tail. How to pay tuition. Montau. <laughs> tail. <laughs> and he comes out as a big song. Uh, the most interesting part, though, so Halloween is directed by John Carpenter. When he was a student at Western Kentucky University... Oh, couple Ooh. alums, me and John Carpenter. Yeah, he grew Carpenter. up in Bowling Green, apparently. Uh, he took a psychology class, and he recounts the time at his class, took a field trip that changed his life forever. Carpenter encountered patients, but there was one child who stuck, struck with him. The look translated to the film where the psychiatrist, Dr. Sam Loomis, used these words to describe a young Michael Myers. This blank, pale, emotionless face, blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. So basically, he saw a kid in this psych ward that was just blank stare, and it it helped create his Michael Myers character. Hmm. Wow. So he, yeah, like he just, like when he went and actually really saw a kid, yeah. he was like, there's just nothing there. I was thinking, you know, Michael Myers, like they, because when they describe him in it, the, does he have any emotion? Does he have, you know, he just kills and doesn't feel anything. Where like guys do that, the Iceman, uh, you see that documentary, there's an HBO, yeah, the guy, the Hitman. The Hitman. And uh, he just did not feel anything. He could kill and then just go home and have dinner with his family. And uh, he just, there was no emotion. No, they don't care. And there's something that's missing. And Michael Myers, there was, you know, yeah. something that was missing. Something's missing, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that mask, we didn't, I mean, this didn't do anything. We talked about the mask. That mask came from a William Shatner, Captain Kirk. Yeah. Did we talk about that? No. I felt like we talked about that night. You were looking at Aaron like, come on. I felt. I, think, tell I, me I, we I remember did. we talked about it a little bit. But it what? was a, like a, the mask was from like a Star Trek thing. That was supposed to be a Captain Kirk. And then they just took it and changed the eyes and altered the mask to, to what it ended up being. But yeah, that was just a Captain Kirk Star Trek mask when it started. Yeah. It's a famous mm -hmm. mask. So we got famous a, mask. It is yeah, scary. Would is, you, who would you rather uh, encounter Michael Myers or, or Jason? Like, if you're like, you got to encounter one of them. You don't know when you're ever going to encounter them. I feel like Jason, because he's always got the chainsaw. You know, you can hear it. Yeah, like, he's, so he's always running with the chainsaw. Yeah, like, it's always, always like, on. Yeah, the other, it's, it seems more like he could just kind of blend in at a bank more. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> well, just they're both about seven feet tall. And Jason also has a machete. The chainsaw, I don't think he walks so around. So I think it's easier to you're hide. You're thinking it. about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is in the name, Chainsaw Mass, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So that was that the, that was the hint that that was a chainsaw. Yes, yeah, that's why they you could tell he had his yeah, chainsaw when they put it, the title in the name. Uh, Jason, I'm not even sure uses a chainsaw. Maybe he did. I've never seen Jason. So I, I, I don't think I've yeah. ever seen it. So you, <laughs> I mean, if everybody wants to know what it's like oh. being friends with Mick, <laughs> there, that would that's what I would. <laughs> I would cut, I'm going to cut that clip up and just to go, what they go, what's Mick like? And I'll go, it's like this. Here's what Mick's like. Never seen it. Yeah. Uh, Jason, those swords, do you want Michael Myers or Jason? Who do you want to encounter? All you're told is you're going to encounter them one day. You never know when. But, and then maybe you turn in the corner, maybe they're going to come in your house. You got to get away from them. Who do you think you have the best shot? At getting away from. So what are the weapons though that they have? 
I feel like I mean, it doesn't matter. They're seven feet tall and they kill people with anything and everything. They can murder you with their their hands. So don't we're not getting into like they both have the one same of them weapons. has a pickaxe. Like you know, if it's like a crazier, you're gonna I mean, like you're, you know, you're already dead. It doesn't matter. You're, you're killed. <laughs> uh, you're you're gonna get both of them actually. So you I don't feel like maybe choose. Michael Myers. I, don't, I it's been a while since I've seen the Friday Thirteenth movies, but. Watching Halloween, there were some people that gave him a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy Lee Curtis keeps getting away. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could run. Yeah. I feel like, how would we die in, in these movies? Like, I'd die in like a bank, I feel like, or something. <laughs> like, that. Yeah, like I don't a- think anybody's died in a bank ever in any of those movies. <laughs> but and they actually, Jason went to space and they still never went to a bank. I mean, that's how far <laughs> off they went. They, go, they put Jason in space and they still... They go, what if we do in a bank? And they go, well, that's not believable. Space would be believable, <laughs> but bank would not. Brian, I feel like, would be like a teacher who would be like murdered in the school. Where they're like, all right, we're in the school. Let's kill Brian. Like, yeah. They just, uh, I don't know. I don't right. know about you. All right, which, uh, there's a lot of urban legends here. Do you want to, any yeah, in particular? Let's go, I don't know. Let's just go through some of them. All what's, right. What's some interesting ones? All right. Uh, I'll just start at the top, and if you guys see one you want to talk about, we'll go. Marilyn Manson played Paul Pfeiffer on The Wonder Years. You guys heard this? Mm-mm. I heard it. I did hear that. Yeah, that was a. That, it's not true. It's uh, not true. But wait, everybody thought that. Then that, you just go to IMDb, Manson. and you're like, oh, I guess he didn't. Yeah, but I mean, this was before you could do that, so that was that was a rumor. I actually met the guy who played Paul Pfeiffer. Oh, years. really? Yeah, I met him at a wedding. At he's, Marilyn Manson concert. Is he? He's a lawyer too. <laughs> right? He was at a yes. wedding. He's a yeah, lawyer. A friend of mine got married in New Jersey, and yeah, he was there, and he was friends with him. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Not Marilyn Manson, the guy. Paul Five. Yeah. So he's not an actor anymore. He's a lawyer. Yeah, he's a lawyer. How'd you know that? Somebody else I know knows him. Okay. Well, he's the, he could have also yeah. been at that wedding. He's not the uh, the Goonies guy. No, that yeah. guy's a lawyer too. Yeah. What's the? Did we talk about that? Did yeah. We talk about that on the podcast, the Truffle or? Shuffle Kid. No, I think no, it was on the, on the bus. bus. Yeah. Uh, the yeah the 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 fat kid yeah. on Goonies mm. is a lawyer. I talk. I he he's a lawyer to a lot of comedians. Great guy. I've met with him and like uh, he's not my lawyer, but he he was he was a great dude. But it was funny to. I mean, he's a real lawyer. I mean, he's like legit lawyer. But it's funny to when you go meet with him and you're like, oh, uh, good J- lawyer. Jamie Lee Curtis was born with both male and female sex organs. Not true. Uh, there was supposedly an interview where she admitted to this, but uh, according to Snopes, that's not the case. Some people think they... What's Snopes? It's this guy. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Snopes. Uh, according to Snopes. Uh, yeah. It's the website where you go to look search up urban it, legends. Like Snopes. Ah. Like yeah. 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 Um, some people think her, her dad was Tony Curtis and her mom was Janet Lee, and they had this perfect life, supposedly. And some people think this... Rumor just started because out of pure jealousy, they're like, "Oh yeah, they had yeah. a perfect life." So they I say their kid that. was that. Born, I've yeah. met her before a couple of times. She's crazy nice. That's good. Did you get a vibe that she was born with both organs? <laughs> no, I did not get that vibe. Okay, that's crazy how pervasive those kind of rumors are. Yeah, you know, because I, I, it, like, I would have thought that was because I heard that years ago, and I thought that was still. You know what's crazy, impressive about her? I met her. And this is like, you know, 15 years ago or around almost 10 years later, I see see her again. And I only met her. I was hung out with her for like five, 10 minutes. She remembered my name. Wow. She was like, hey, Nick. Wow. I was like, wow, that isn't, you know, that's crazy. It's yeah, a crazy, crazy memory. That's super impressive when someone can do that. Mm-hmm. It's very nice, too. Yeah. Made me feel good. I was like, yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so don't talk about her having two mm, pirates. Yeah. Right? Well, right. she, but that's crazy that she has to answer that question. Yeah, like, that's what's that's what's insane. Is like so then she gets asked, "Hey, are you have male and female sex organs?" And you can be like, "No, I don't." That's insane to ask me that. Like, well, we have to ask, and you're like, "Someone just made that up." <laughs> yeah. Someone just said that it's out of nowhere, and now she has to answer for it. Yeah, and you know, I hate that, but Jamie, I do need to ask you. <laughs> for the record, you go, you go. You just give a big, and I think that's terrible. But <laughs> it's on the paper, and I need to ask. Uh, just set the record straight. Uh, Mr. Rogers was once a Navy SEAL. Not true. Not true. So I, I had always. Are any heard. of these true? There's some, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I can would, read like uh, a true one. If you know the true ones, read just 
three headlines make one true and not true. All right. Let's see if we can guess. All right. Let's see here. I still think Mr. Rogers was like a sniper, though. Yeah. Part of me that he had. I, I was so convinced by that. Was Is that rooted in anything or is it no. totally made up? Just well, totally. there's zero chance. I don't know why you would ever think. He just, I, it was just a thing where like, oh, You've he has tattoos. That vibe. Just people always said it. And he so, had tattoos? Yeah, that he had all these tattoos and he was like, and it wasn't crazy. It just was, he, he was a Vietnam vet. It was, his job was he was a sniper in there. And I was like, oh, okay. You no, thought he, that made sense? It it, it made sense. Because it just sounded like, oh, okay, maybe that was the case. Yeah. I mean, I had enough friends. A guy that talked as quietly as he did. But. And just. Why not? Yeah. I had friends. Could parents, be. Parents. You know. They you were, had friends that were snipers. Not snipers, the, but, you know, they were like, oh, wow, this is crazy. You were, yeah. you know, in Vietnam, a, yeah. Marine, you know, in a crazy battle. Yeah. And he's just like a regular dude, not like crazy. I mean, not Mr. Rogers kind of tone, but. Yeah, yeah, people thought he was a sniper. They thought he wore the the sweaters to cover up tattoos. <laughs> I love it. But it's just because he was so yeah. down to uh, earth kind of guy. That people well, I mean, he maybe would be a good sniper. Would just he's very even kill. Just right. heart rate doesn't change. Change, yeah, yeah. and just kind of sits there. He's killed a lot of people, and now he's just talking to kids. <laughs> All right, um, circus hippo eats dwarf. All right, easy, guys. This is... Uh... <laughs> Have you heard this? I haven't heard it. All right. Uh... But I believe hippos are the most dangerous animal. Yeah. Little people are also. You know, we're little. So it's... So this it could was... happen. Yeah. I think I would die by hippo. If it was me and a hippo, I'd be dead. So that was... Uh... Everybody would die, yeah. yeah. At, a, at a circus, a dwarf was jumping on trampoline. I think it was before the show actually started. And bounced sideways right when a hippo was yawning and went... In the hippo's mouth, swallowed him. People thought it was part of the show. Now, I don't know about the swallow, but yeah. I think the... Uh, well, he's going to read three. One is real, right? Mm -hmm. And two are fake. So I was on board guess. until the swallow. All and right. then well, I'm here, like... We're going to finish the next two. What eat? What do you think eat means? I well, mean, it's a if weird you like, that he bounced. If you, yeah. you know, then, then all of a sudden we're talking about Dumbo. Or yeah. uh, not Dumbo. What's Pinocchio? Like yeah. inside the whale. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Pinocchio was in a well. <laughs> Jonah? Jonah, Jonah in the well. Jonah was in the well. Jonah? No, Pinocchio wasn't in the well. Did oh, did it, oh, oh, did he really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I think the wood would uh, <laughs> swell, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> so maybe you could just lie some and get out. Yeah, <laughs> rip them apart. Um, headlight flashing is a gang initiation. Have you heard this? Yeah, I've always heard that. Yeah, I so haven't heard it. Don't flash your light to someone, like if their lights are off at night, because it could be a gang initiation. We're all in a gang now from these drive ins. Where well, that's what the they, flashing lights. yeah, everybody's flashing lights. But that's so if you ever, if you see someone's headlights off, you know, what do you do? You flash your lights to say, hey, your lights are off. Someone that you ever do that driving at night? Yeah, you know that I do that. So they're saying don't do that because if you did that, that was they'll turn around, follow you, and, and kill, kill you, kill you. I feel like there's not gangs anymore. I feel like is that? I mean, no. There's there's plenty of them. There's a lot of gangs. Like there was a big thing growing up, like the Bloods yeah. and the Crips, and now it's like, yeah, they're doing real good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they they are. Just, yeah, they are. The That's mafia, a hoax. No, the mafia is probably not like it was, but gangs are. You know, I mean, look at cartels. Cartels, mafia, and gangs. The cartels thriving. Yeah. In Mexico. But I wouldn't call so them the, a gang. Would you call that a gang? A cartel? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of a gang. I don't know if you think it's like gangs or, you know, uh, what's that movie where they had the... West Side Story? West Side Story. Yeah. I think if that's what you think of a gang is. No, or even I don't Bloods think and Crips. Just, okay. I think there's Bloods and Crips. <laughs> I don't think there's like fun gangs where it's like we've just fist fought and went home, you know, yeah. like, the, like in the 50s. Someone's going to get cut tonight. I think now there's straight up major gangs that can the MS i think they're a lot more organized MS, ms13 like i think they're even more they're more organized now than they ever were uh but yeah yeah all right um mole people are a group of underground tunnel dwellers that live underneath new york city so those are the three so you got to pick one's one's real the other two are not mm -hmm. i think i know the answer i'm going with the uh mole people lived in the subways and there's a whole community yeah. that was underneath it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I I'm going with the dwarf that got swallowed. Okay, you're Be picking the true one. Oh, the true one. Oh, I'm I'm going mole people. Yeah. So only one of those three actually is true. Mm -hmm. I'm going the mole people as well. 
Yeah, I'm going. I think I've looked up more people. They, I think they did an interview. They did a news story about it. That'd be a great documentary Uh, with more people. So they just live in darkness down there. That's they live in darkness and they come up and someone goes to the grocery store. There's different levels. There's guys. There's a hierarchy, and so someone's like below that doesn't go up. But so which one was more people is correct. Is correct. Yeah. So there's a hierarchy of uh, they go and they live down there and there's they have people that would go out and go get groceries. And then they come back, and so you know, some people don't come up. I at heard all. there's like a little city down there too. Yeah, it's basically homeless people that live in the subway. Yeah, well, there's so many different layers. Yeah, the subway at New York is eight stories, something like that. It goes way down. And a lot of the tracks yeah. no longer are in service, so they just live there. Yeah, yeah. The temperature stays the same the whole time. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it, yeah, it's. Man. Are they still they're still there now? They yeah. think. I, mean, I think they did an interview. I think they yeah. filmed. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that'd be a great guest. Yeah, if you could they get have all stories about real, so that's good. Yeah, I think I, I was almost. I thought you were going to go for it. I uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of when like. You say uh, you bounced over. When you go, you bounce off the trampoline and just went in his mouth. It, it sounds like <laughs> yeah. a cartoon. I was on well, board until the inside the mouth. Yeah. Where I'm like. Yeah. Like I, I'm a hundred pounds. I'm not going inside anything. Yeah. You know, like I'll be, I could be eaten. I'm, I'm a good target to be like dead by like scratched or like bit, yeah. but not swallowed. Yeah. Um, spider lays eggs in woman's cheek. You ever heard that? In woman's cheek? Like yes, I've heard different variations. This is spider bites you, or you get scratched, and you're in spider bite, and you're like, oh, and then it swells up and it hatches. Oh wow! And just thousands or, or hundreds, maybe, of spiders come running inside out inside your mouth. Well, on the outside, like here. Oh, they bite you and lay the eggs inside your skin. Yeah, and wow. then all, I've never heard that. That no. would be a good movie. Whether that's I true or not, is. I'll be thinking about that for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'll. That's a nightmare. It so it doesn't make sense. Well, they is that how they you. lay eggs? They, according to science, no, they don't. Yeah, but that is a common. I mean, I've heard that a bunch. I've never heard that. that I've never religion. heard it. Yeah, but uh, that would be crazy. Could you imagine just like having like thirty five spiders where you're like, oh, excuse me a minute, I just gotta, you know, <laughs> you just spit out well, like six do, spiders. You do swallow a certain number of spiders every year, right? Isn't yeah. there? I don't know about that. It's like six I think a bugs. year, maybe, or something. I feel like it's more than that. Is it spiders? It's bugs, bugs or spiders? Is, or yeah, bugs you're, you're never small. more than six feet from a spider. I read that somewhere. So ah, right. Here we go. That's true. Here we go. You're never because uh, of okay. social distancing. You're never more than six feet away yeah. from one. Was it more before yeah, COVID? Since COVID, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was less. That's that's so. Right now, we're near. Who knows how many spiders? Probably, yeah, in the ceiling. You know, yeah. Who knows that's what's crazy. going on up there? One, two. Just up there living it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Killer in the back seat of the car. There's different variations of this. I have this. a joke about that. Oh, yeah. My journey joke. This journey song uh, where I did that. Guy's it, in the back seat of your car. He just waits till. What is, yeah, what's the different variations? Well, the different variations are um, one is a woman driving home at night and a car keeps flashing its high beams at her, but from behind. And she thinks that person's chasing her, but really that person is trying to warn her there's a killer in the back seat. Mm. And every time the high beams happen, he ducks his head down. Mm. And then there's another variation. The woman's getting gas and the guy uh, announces over the loudspeaker, come in, your credit card didn't work. And she's like, what? And she goes in and they're like, no, there's a killer in your back seat. No. Different mm. variations like that. Yeah. Neither one of those are true. Correct. Uh, so I had a joke about that. That's where I did it on Comedy Central. Um, so we probably couldn't play the clip there, but they said, uh, where I say, I'd always, I, when I start the car, I always have the song. Don't stop believing playing. Cause no one can, everybody loves that song. So even if there was a killer <laughs> in the back seat, he would just go, it's a pretty good song. You got <laughs> and then he'd climb up front and we'd become friends. Yeah. That's don't it. stop. Believe in. Yeah. What's the next <laughs> thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's the, what you don't know the words? Don't stop believing. And then what's the after that? <laughs> Notre Dame, Florida State, Mundo, Teo. Yeah. Don't stop. You know what's relieving? It's not believing. Relieving? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, that's why I let you go with it. That's why I kept saying don't stop. Yeah. 
Uh, right. Wade Boggs drank over 100 beers on a cross-country flight. I've heard this. The, yeah. So there was an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where he plays himself on there and supposedly drinks like 67 beers cross-country flight. And then Charlie Day, one of the actors on it, said, according to when he was on Jimmy Fallon, that he asked Wade Boggs about that rumor. He's like, it was actually 107 beers he drank on a cross-country flight. Yeah. That's from getting to the airport. Waiting at the airport, flying across country. Um, Is Wade like a just a big time drinker? I don't think guy? so. Uh, He's not too. You drink big. 107 beers. I would say so. <laughs> I, that's the dumbest question. <laughs> You think he drinks? You think he's got a problem? I don't know. He drank 107 <laughs> beers. Yeah, he's got a. He's a big time drinker. What kind of beer though? Was it IPA? Or are we talking Coors Light? Or? It has to be Coors Light. IPA, Nicolo. I think he'd die. Yeah, uh, IPA's got too much alcohol in it. If he's drinking Coors Light, he's going to be smashed. But like, you got to think he's a big dude and works out. Uh, I mean, probably hammer. Ten just pound back Bud Lights, Coors Lights, Coors Light just pound them back. You know. Here's here's a question. How many times did he go to the bathroom if he drank 107 beers on that flight? The sheer volume of 100 beers Aaron, is could overwhelming. You do it? Could you do it? Could you no, do let's it? get one of these geniuses from the comments. Why don't you cr- crunch those numbers for yeah. us? You know what I mean? Ah, uh, oh, where's my friend? Friend? little snappy? White I'm afraid. Oh, hey, whoa. Aaron. Hey, dude. I'm afraid. Johnny to, White Bread. I'm afraid to do. Yeah, Johnny <laughs> White Bread. Back <laughs> off. <laughs> Johnny Whitebread, why don't you crunch those numbers for us, dude? Why don't you send us a spreadsheet? Uh, 100 beers times 12 ounces, 1,200. That's a lot of liquid. Like, imagine just how much you have to pee. That's what I'm thinking about. That's a lot. Uh, Yeah, you'd have to pee a lot. I mean, you'd be definitely smashed. I mean, you got to think that flight, maybe when he did this, cross-country flight now is six hours, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So maybe back then, probably 90s. Maybe it was even a little... 34 hours. No, maybe it was seven hours. You know, maybe... They said six in the thing. Oh, okay. so Did cans of beer hours. used to be smaller size? No. No. But I mean, they 100... They 12 100, ounces? I think if he's drinking Bud Lights, I think this guy's... I like the idea that he's not... If you asked, is he a big drinker? That he would not be, but can then also still do 100 beers. Yeah. He's like, no, I've never really drank before, but I did once. I did all my drinking one time. Who was the other? There was a pitcher, David uh, Wells. Wells, who that, got smashed. That's supposedly true. And that yeah, pitch, I, I no, met drunk. him. I met him at the. I went to a Grammys party. Yeah, and I met him, and I was talking to him, hung out with him. Yeah, didn't ask him that. Yeah, I feel like how many people ask him like, "Is it true that you got drunk?" And like, how many people will ask? I him thought that? he was on acid. He either took acid. Or he was at a crazy hangover. But I, the acid, he threw a perfect game. Look Doc up the Ellis. David Wills thing. There's a document. Uh, yeah. There's a documentary about a guy who was on cocaine, right? And threw a no-hitter. Well, well, Doc Ellis was on LSD. LSD. Okay. LSD. That's yeah. acid. Yeah. And he threw a no-hitter. A no-hitter. A yeah. perfect game, I think. Ooh. I can't remember if it's a perfect game or a no-hitter. Yeah. Either way, unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And then David Wells did something, too. Uh, Maybe Doc like Wells David Wells hung game. over or... Yeah, it was up partying all I night. Remember, Didn't go to sleep. I remember when I worked at uh, Waiting Tables in Chicago at Jake Melnick's. And we would they would talk about, because the, the the Levy restaurants, the people that would do, provide all the, fu- the food for the Chicago Cubs and the White Sox, and they did the restaurants. It's a big restaurant company. And they would talk about, like, they would be hanging out with Mark Grace before, like the night before till 3, 4 a.m. And just gr- just kicking it. And then those dudes all roll out of bed at like 2 p.m. and Mark's on first base, like, mm, just playing. Dude. And you're like, dude, we, he just went to bed. Yeah. And he, I mean, he had played like a noon game. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're professional athletes. Yeah. So apparently he was drunk. Dave yeah. Wells was drunk. Dave, yeah. Because yeah. he was partying all night from Saturday Night Live. And it was a, uh, it was a matinee. Or, uh, you call it a matinee? <laughs> a day, day game. A day game, yeah. And he was out all night partying. He, by the way, loves to kind of tell stories about, you know, he he loves it. Yeah, That's so Doc cool. Ellis was on LSD. I guess David Wells was just hung over. So uh, Doc threw a no-hitter, and then what did he, did he throw a perfect game? Doc Ellis? Yeah. No, also he threw his perfect game while drunk, which allows for the argument to be made that this is the greatest game ever pitched. No, Doc, no, Doc Ellis was a no-hitter. 
Dave Wells was correct. A perfect game. Correct. And he was just, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, he had to be technically probably still drunk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's in his blood, you know, just feeling like you're, you know. He said he was half drunk with bloodshot eyes, monster breath, and a skull rattling hangover from partying, Saturday Night Live party until 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. He got one hour sleep. Yeah. And pitched. Yeah. And just for context, it says in this article, there's only been 23 perfect games ever. So mm-hmm. it is a crazy feat. And that's a hundred something years, hungover or not, it's wild. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's even crazier to go. That's that. Is it, is it the best game ever pitched? Yeah. Because you know he's always gets to. He talks to the other people. Oh, you threw a perfect game. You're in real good shape. I was. I had one hour sleep and yeah. was drunk. <laughs> yeah. I rolled out of bed with one hour sleep and threw a perfect game. Crazy, crazy. Uh, Orange Juice Man, someone suggested that we talk about this. Yeah, what is that? Um, so I, there's there's another there's variations of it, but apparently the story goes a guy either was caught by the cops, he had a bunch of LSD on him, so he took it all not to be caught, but he took so much that he started believing that he was an orange. <laughs> and if someone touched him or squeezed him, he would become orange juice. Or some variations is he just thinks he's orange juice, and he's supposedly in a psych ward. He thinks he's an orange. Uh, orange that's juice. where it gets sad. The the first part of it is like, oh, that's funny. He yeah. thinks he's orange juice, and he's like, he is in a psych ward. You're like, ah, now it didn't work out. The scientists say that there's no proof that that's a real person, but they say when you're on LSD, you think you are one with everything, so you could think you're an inanimate object. So they said it's possible. You know, it's possible that a guy probably thought he was he was orange juice or an orange. Well, there's, there's different variations. One is that he thought he was an orange, and if anyone touched him or squeezed him, he would become orange juice. Yeah. He just like okay. starts going into people like, you look thirsty, and just starts trying to like squeeze yeah. his hand yeah. into yeah. a cup. Some stories just say he thinks he's orange juice. <laughs> yeah. And then, okay. And then, uh, I, I would imagine a version of this happened, mm-hmm. and then it's just been blown out right. into being like, oh, he's got a psych ward. That's what I would imagine. I think all these had some grain of truth. Yeah. And then right. it just takes off. Ankle slicing car thief. I've thought about that a lot. What is that? that I think about a lot. That one will get in my head. Mm-hmm. They hide under your car mm-hmm. and they cut your Achilles heel. You fall and mm-hmm. they steal your car. Mm-hmm. Wow. Or yeah. rob you or do whatever. whatever they, That's yeah. awful. Because you can't stand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's terrifying. That's if you tough. have great shoes, I wonder if that'll protect you. <laughs> like the high top. So a lot of people wear, they wear, uh, or boot. people wear, put a piece of wood in the back of their, you know, that thing that you, that you think is to put your foot in the shoe. Yeah. Shoe you're actually supposed to leave it there. Yeah. That's protecting yourself. A lot of people do that for protection. Uh, uh, uh HIV, HIV needle in the coin slot. You guys oof. heard this? <clears throat> no, but it makes me, uh, I, I don't think it's I've ever on. put Listen, my... it's not what you think. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I've heard a lot about people putting hyperdermic needles in coin slots and you reach in. This is when there were pay phones so you yeah. would reach in and for change and you get stuck by a needle. Now, there was a case in 2009, a student at Middle Tennessee State University, my alma mater, was stuck by a hyperdermic needle after reaching into the change dispenser of a Pepsi machine located on campus. She was treated at Middle Tennessee Medical Center and later released. A second syringe was discovered a week later in a vitamin water vending machine at the college's student center. Mm. No one was injured in that incident. But besides that, there's been no cases of anyone ever getting HIV from a needle. Uh, vitamin water is also I, not yeah. that healthy for you. I zoned out of that. Say that one more time. <laughs> I, was, I don't know where I was at. He started, I saw you drinking water I somewhere. So you, they, someone did do a needle? There was in 2009, supposedly, at MTSU... Yeah. Someone got stuck by a needle that someone had left in a change suspension. Yeah. But there's uh, been no cases of anyone getting HIV. So they're or leaving AIDS. it where you put the, where your money comes out. Yeah. And then the needle is like sitting the there. change dispenser. Yeah. yeah. The little, the little flap. I always think yeah. that with a cop, when a cop, you know, they always they wear gloves and they go, Do you have a needle or anything on me? But they, they always just dive their hand in their pockets. And yeah. I'm like, well, if they have a needle. Like, wouldn't yeah. you be a little more careful? I mean, because they're arresting someone that possibly could have a needle. What you remember Halloween as kids? Like, there was like a a crazy thing where it's like you got to check the candy. There was like a crazy fear when sure. we were kids mm-hmm. about there being like needles, razor blades, razor, razor blades. Blade. Yeah, yeah. If you ever got an apple, they would put a razor blade in it. 
and you th- you would throw it. Is that on here? Is that that's never been true though? Um, I, almost, I remember being I'm terrified. Positive. We would we would yeah. have to look. Through I still candy. think about it. Well, I still look through. We look through Harper's candy. You do. And what do you think? I mean, is you in make it? sure you're you're not. You know, what are you looking for? Is there coronavirus in this? <laughs> I think you're just looking. You just you know. I don't know. I don't know anything. Is there something that she shouldn't eat? You know, I don't. Mm-hmm. Is there whatever? You're just you're as a parent. You're going to just go. Let me just make sure you yeah. just got cranes. A bunch of candy from strangers. Right. Let yeah. me peek around. Like, let me just make sure. I mean, they dump it out anyway. Yeah. We don't go crazy. Uh huh. But you know, we're not what analyzing. If, what, if, like every, you know. what if he gets like a metal detector and he just like Shh. Just, no man. cases of strangers killing or permanently injuring children this way has been proven. Commonly, the story appears in the media when a young child dies suddenly after Halloween. But. uh it's always been shown that children did not die from eating candy given to them by strangers. Um, yeah, I mean, you're usually going to a neighborhood where you know everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You go to yeah. good neighborhoods, like go to rich neighborhoods. Yeah. Like there, you would, we would go, there's a neighborhood uh, in Nashville we'd, always, we'd go to. And it was like one that notoriously you go there. And walk in the candy, you know, it's like full size candy. Bar. <laughs> yeah. You remember how great that was when you would get the king size crunch bar or something that was just like wow. we had a dentist across the street from us and he would give uh like a toothbrush and oh Ugh. everybody would uh, be like you're awful yeah vegetables <laughs> here's the celery yeah yeah uh paul mccartney died and was replaced by a lookalike that's a great story uh you ever heard it no yeah he uh the <laughs> urban legend <laughs> <laughs> That he died in 1966 in a car accident and was secretly replaced by a lookalike. Who was a better songwriter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did good. <laughs> He's like, look, look, guys, just keep going. I know we really love Paul. He never wrote a song. He's not done anything, but we just got to keep this going. He did. Your Paul 1967? McCartney. 1966, I think. Uh, so they in the they were in the right in the middle of, of it. Yeah, and then they they thought that the Beatles were leaving clues in songs, and there's some examples of that. Abbey Road, when he walks across in that famous photo, he's not wearing shoes and he's out of step. They thought that was a clue. Yeah, mm. um, he's even had fun with it. Um, and then I think plus the, that famous interview where he said, "I'm not really Paul McCartney." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Chris Farley uh, when he. This and L sketch, you know, where he interviewed yeah. Paul McCartney, he asked him about it. You could, I mean, truthfully, what if it was true? And you, you could almost never prove it. No one would ever believe. You know, he could come out and go, "No, I'm, I am not," and just keep saying it, and no one would ever care. No one would ever believe him. Yeah, that they ever did it. Has anybody faked their death and it worked out? Elvis, I was just thinking oh, that. Elvis, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you believe it, Elvis. I've been to Elvis's house. It's Ricky, the bus driver's hometown, Tupelo. Yeah. Tupelo. Is there anybody that's that uh, faked it? And well, if it worked out, how would we know? I know they get caught. I mean, maybe they eventually get oh, caught, but yeah. even just get caught. I know people some have tried to pirates, fake their death. Uh, some of those pirates in those museums, they said that uh, you know that they like no one knows if they escaped and lived a life. They could still be alive today. I'm yeah. sure there's been non-famous people that maybe faked their death or disappeared, and you just assume they're dead. And they insurance. Just, mm-hmm. On the run. And they truly never, you know. Carol Baskin's husband. <laughs> yeah. Carol Baskin. I think there, you could, you know, it'd be great if you could ever talk to, if you ever saw something where they just, a guy's like, I have had a whole nother life. All these people in the world think I'm dead. And I've, and I've lived this life and just no one knows. Yeah. I, mean, I think people like, I, I imagine there's guys that are, they like that feeling. They love the, just having something else going on. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and you have something that crazy. Some people like to be on the run. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot. Of, I mean, Whitey Bulger was on the run for more years as someone else than he was as himself. Yeah, he lived as a separate person, right? For ye- yeah. many years. Yeah. Got caught just recently. Yeah, just like at a playground. Somebody was like, you know, you seem like Whitey Bulger. Yeah, in Santa they, Monica. They caught him, uh, right? Wasn't it at a playground? I don't think so. No, I think it was at his house. Yeah. But someone put it together that lived in the same apartment that he did. But they just caught him. Yeah. I mean, a year ago, two years ago. No, it's been longer. Oh, he's, really? He's already had his trial and died since then. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Well, time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Santa Monica. Um, some of these Halloween movies are that are based on truth. Amityville Horror. 
That was a real house. Yeah, they, uh, I know. A, there's a comic. Uh, uh, Tim. Uh, God, what's it? He lives there. He lives in Amityville. <laughs> this is that house? No, he lives near it. He grew up there. Uh, Tim Gage. Tim, no. He uh, he would always he opened for John Panette forever. Uh, everywhere. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I, I just haven't. I, I'm Tim Crumpier. Uh, yeah. Was it really? I think so. Yeah. Wow. That oh, was, good job. Yeah. Nick. Just Tim, and I'm type his name. In. I love him. He's a great guy. Yeah. What is it? He's the funny best. comic. Nice yeah. guy. I mean, yeah. that sounded like you were making up a name. What is it? Crumpier. Crumpier. I think C R U M P. I'm gonna let Nate spell that. I E R. Crumpier. Matateo. Like that? Yeah. Matateo. Matateo. Let me do comedian. Yeah. Never give one a LinkedIn as their first result. Tim Crump. On Google. K R O M P. Is that yeah, Tim? Tim? Yeah. yeah. It's K R O M P. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's him. Gotham yep. Comedy Live. Tim. So he lived in Amityville. Yeah, he grew up there. And uh, it's a uh, very that funny in comic. Is Long and, Island? Yeah, or in... I don't know why I blanked on his. Uh, we're on friends with him. Uh, yes. South Shore yeah. of Long Island. Yeah, he like grew up near, he grew up in there and like, they would see that house as kids and stuff. I was directed by uh, a woman, Helen Schaefer, that was in the original Amityville Horror. She's yeah. a TV director now, directed me in private practice. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's not as good as my story, but it's close. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, that's based on a book. The, the family lived there, said that's, that this really happened. Yeah. And I mean, do you guys know the story? No. No. Basically, there was a like a massive murder in the house, and then this family bought the house really cheap, uh, not long after it, and then just crazy stuff started happening. Paranormal stuff started happening in the house to the point where they left it after twenty eight days, just got out of there because it was just such crazy stuff happening. But they took a polygraph test and passed, and um, but uh, since then, people have bought and owned the house and said nothing's happened there, but. But I have that's one, what they're forced I have one ghost to say. Story. I've, I was saying it on stage, and I kind of stopped saying it. What? What happened? That's a great job. What is it? Yeah, I don't know if. I, uh, well, the ghost story. I can tell the ghost story. We. I used to move. Uh, I delivered uh, appliances. You know what? That's the part that actually. So the, that I can add in somewhere. Uh, uh, I need to write that down. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just want to add it into this new hour and like, uh, and I have a place for it. And it just made me, all right. Uh, so there, uh, I, I delivered, uh, mattresses and we go deliver a house in Belmont, this old part of town, kind of by Bear, Belmont, Belmead, I guess, kind of over there, you know, near where he lives, a lot of old money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is, you know. He's not doing this podcast for the money. He's got a ton of it. <laughs> and they, uh, so we, we're delivering it and I'm standing in the, in the, uh, back of the truck and my buddy goes and knocks on the door and the guy's not coming to the door. He's not answering the door. So he's like, he's like, I don't know what's going on. And I'm in the back of the truck and I can look and I can see inside the window and I'm watching what I, the silhouette of the guy just kind of walk around the, the house. And I, I mean, it's an obvious silhouette. I'm, I'm looking at the silhouette. I'm going, that's the, I go, the dude's right there, man. That's crazy. Like, I don't know. How, and we're banging on the door, doorbell. Cause I'm like, there's no way he's not hearing us. He is on the same floor of the door and I'm looking at him. You just keep pointing at Aaron. Like Aaron was involved in this. No. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm pointing and I'm looking at him and he goes, all right. He goes, I don't know. And I was like, whatever. Cause I'd always pull the mattress and you deliver it. You always pull it to the end of the truck and you sit there. And this was a twin bed. It was an easy bed. And so you just wait. And then if he's there, I would bring it to the guy. And so we start walking off and the guy comes and he's in a towel and he's like, sorry, I was in the shower. And I was, I mean, in my head, I just didn't, I was like, whatever. I didn't believe it. And my buddy just he, my buddy just went in the house by himself, and I just stayed at the truck because it was a twin bed. It's easy. He just went up there, and he's like, "Man, this is a cool house. You know, it's an old house." He goes, "Yeah, it's ha- it's haunted." He's like, "There's a ghost that lives here. I'm surprised you didn't meet him. I mean, he's he's around quite a bit." And so when he came back and told me that, I was like, "Well, that I was like that guy said he was in the shower, and, that, and he did have a towel on. He was wet. He ran out of the shower. So obviously this guy was in the shower." 
And this whole time we're knocking, I'm watching a silhouette walk around the bottom of the house. So um, I think that's a ghost. Hmm. I think that's my ghost story. Either of you guys? I mean, I mean, like, so unless someone's lying, like that's, yeah. I know I saw a silhouette. Yeah. I know that the guy was came out of the shower. Wow. Is that crazy. a redumped? Yeah, I, I wasn't going to do the whole joke. Wow. Well, in case I, I do it on stage, so oh. there's a more that I add something, but that's that's the true the 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 true story. And what do you think? What do you think it was? I I think it was a ghost. I mean, I, I like ghosts. I yeah. believe in ghosts. Do you think uh, a ghost is like ghost. a just a straight person, or is it like a white like uh, like a sheet or like a a straight uh, person? I think it's a sheet. I think the sheet with the yeah, eyes. Like a... I think that's it's like Casper is how I've always yeah. looked at ghosts. <laughs> Honestly, though, in my head, I'm like, is it just can you see just like a hologram, or is it like this is just like somebody I think it's in a, like a full outfit? I don't think you ever will see just a straight up person. And you're, and that's like you feel like you could be. Like, How you doing? Nice to meet you. He's wearing it. Yeah. I think you see glimpses of it, and you're always seeing kind of just glimpses. I don't think you're ever full on just talking to there another is, person. It's not like the like, sixth sense. It's you, not like this. Yeah, yeah, where it's a you know you have a yeah a relationship with uh, you know. There was in my uh, parents' house growing up. There was one little area where like my brothers, where all our rooms were, and you had to go around this little corner. And I would always be kind of like freaked out around that area because like when when it'd be cold, you feel like the different uh, the heater or the air. Mm. So I was always kind of scared. And I'm on crutches like right after surgery and I'm going by it. And my brother came out and was like, huh, and scared me. And I just hit him like with the crutch. I just <laughs> nailed him like in the instinct because I was like, it's a ghost. I don't want to die. You know, yeah. it's something. It just felt like it was something. Yeah. And I just nailed him. Yeah. Some people think ghosts are like glitches in a matrix, like we were living in a simulation and that that's like a glitch. Yeah. Mm. Or a parallel universe and somehow e they're even, crossing over. Even Elon Musk starts going on like crazy stuff about that, the parallel universe. And Do y'all have yeah. any ghost stories? I don't. No, none personally. No. What yeah. about the. Do you, do you ever play the game? Scientifically, do you think there's ghosts <laughs> yeah. or do you not believe in it? Because. There's no way scientist. Science. No, I, I'm open to believing in it. Yeah. I've never had a personal experience, but yeah. I'm open to it. And I believe yeah. people that. Yeah. I know people that are smart, grounded, intelligent people. Yeah, exactly. Me? Like, yeah, that have seen stuff, and you're like, well, I'm not going to discount your experience just because yeah. I don't have one. You know. Yeah. Well, you remember there was a game like that's what gets you in Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. Open mindedness, logical. Take that, John Whitebread. I'm now <laughs> John. off John Whitebread. Nah, I still, I'm a big fan. He's my favorite. Yeah. Wasn't there something called Bloody Mary? And you would play the uh -huh. game. You would go in a in a bathroom, and if you say, what do you... Yeah, what do you, say what the name Bloody twice Mary? or... Two, and so, Three you, times. Three you would times. end up seeing something in that mirror, though. Yeah. At least I did. Like yeah. You saw I something. I mean, most people did it, like, but <laughs> it's... <laughs> Most people, yeah. I'm telling you though, there it's was not because there's that a convenient. light, there's just a light. It's you would see it without saying it a couple of times, yeah. But like, you, <laughs> when you say it, like, I remember being a kid and being like seeing like a different light, but you also saw it when you didn't say it, so that could have just been a, a I light. don't think I ever tried to look without saying it, yeah. I yeah. just believe it's three trust it's the candy process. man, candy man, candy man. Yeah, yeah. bell witch was another one, bell witch is here, right? Yep, yep. bell witch is in uh, Adams. Yeah. Yep, Adams, Tennessee, in Robertson County. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the Bell family lived in this property, and uh, they said they were terrorized by Kate Batts, um, a woman that I think had a property dispute with him years earlier and then died. And that was a really famous story. Andrew Jackson came and visited the property um, just to see it because he'd heard the legends, and he yeah. brought all his men with him. and. They got terrorized throughout the night, and their wagon wheels locked up, and sheets wow. were thrown off. And he said he would. Uh, I think later, I think he said he would rather fight the British again than than deal with the Bell Witch. Wow! There you go. Mm. That's a better. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the British need to step up their game. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. There you go. I think it was the British. I'm yeah. Gonna about Run that. through these. We need to be okay. Right, wrapping it up. Um, Scream. Scream is my favorite movie. That's why I put it on here. We talked it. There's oh, a I'll new one coming. I could do it. There's a new Scream coming? Yep. Yeah. I did not know that. I love Scream. I have my bowling ball Scream. Uh, scream the, bowling ball. The the writer of the movie 
learned about the Florida serial killer called the Gainesville Ripper. He was going around terrorizing um, Gainesville. <laughs> Todd Berry might have been in school. Well, I don't know when was that. Nineteen uh, ninety. Todd Berry might. Todd Berry went to Florida University yeah. of Florida. You never <laughs> think that, right? Yeah. No. Seems crazy. Yeah. The Exorcist. Um, that's a real thing. Um, late nineteen forties, Catholic priests perform a series of exorcisms on an anonymous boy, documented under the pseudonym Roland Doe. Fourteen-year-old boy was alleged victim of demonic possession. And the events wow. were recorded by the attending priest Raymond J. Bishop. He and another priest visited Roland in his relative's home, where they allegedly observed shaking bed, flying objects, the boy speaking in guttural voice. And ex- they have this on video. No. Oh. And oh, they recorded. Someone else was in there. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, and ex- exhibiting uh, an aversion to anything sacred. Mm-hmm. Supernatural claims surrounding the events were used. In the exercise. That's a movie I don't think I'll ever see. It just always felt so creepy to me. It and it's just man. like, yeah. I just don't think I'll ever watch it. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, you know what? It'll be fun tonight to watch that movie. Yeah. And just I met a priest, Bishop Choby. I think we've talked about mm-hmm. this. Uh, who went to, was it, what's it called? Seminary? Or what's it called when you're trained to be a priest? A seminary. Seminary. Yeah. seminary. And he was at seminary with this guy, this this priest that did the exorcism. Yeah, wow. knew him oh, wow. and talked about it very matter of factly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The wow. uh, the shining, I know that's on here. Yeah, like that's another. Uh, I stayed at the hotel where they. It's the outside of the shining. Yeah. Wow. So the when the it's in Mount Hood. Mm-hmm. It's another joke that I said on stage. We're going to Oregon. That's when I was on the cab on the way to Oregon. There's a lot of trees. Oregon has a lot of yeah. lot of trees. Yeah, yeah. And I told the crowd, the cab driver, I go, you "Guys, got a lot of trees out here, huh?" He goes, "Yeah, I don't." And I was like, "It's more than I care for." Like it's, I go, it's an overwhelming amount. And he just didn't know. He was like, "Okay," and it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it is overwhelming when yeah. you see how many trees are there. Where you're, yeah. you go, it's if crazy. you got lost in those trees, it's over. You're not. There's just endless trees that you as far as you can see mm-hmm. but we stayed in the at the hotel it's the outskirts not a big hotel uh but it's the the it's just the outside outside is what's shot there and the other and the inside is uh which is funny is when you see the outside of this hotel it wouldn't there's no way the hotel is big enough to you can tell that's not big enough yeah but the inside is somewhere else but the outside they have DVD players in every room, and you can get a copy of The Shining. And I watched uh, I watched The Shining in the, in the hotel. Wow. That's pretty cool. Shining was a, yeah, that Shining, I remember watching that. was one of the first movies Here that comes like, really, Johnny. Yeah, really got, got you. Yeah. I, I think I was I like st- 18. I still I don't that. like being in like a late at night in a hallway in a hotel by myself mm-hmm. because of that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, Stephen King said he and his wife were staying at this hotel right before it shut down for the winter. So they're like the only ones in the hotel. And he's talked about how creepy it was. Yeah. And that's led to that. Uh, Munchkin hung himself in The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I guess I'm, everyone's looking at me. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe because you Nick, spoke up uh, immediately. Man, my, back in my doctorate of right, I go. Uh, and we'll go like, all right, thank you, Jamie Lee, for finally setting us straight. <laughs> Nick Novicki, uh, <laughs> Munchkin hung himself, Wizard of Oz. Thoughts on that? <laughs> did it happen? Did it not happen? Answer the question. I hate asking this question, but we have to know for the record. Uh, actually, it was a great uncle of mine. Oh. Uh, who, no. Uh, no. Supposedly did see not, it. Did anybody... not. There is all these crazy stories about like the partying that went on in The Wizard of Oz. But here's the thing. A lot of times when it's like me and other little people, like I've done some of these movies with other little people where mm. we're in like a, you know, Vancouver for a couple months. And people are like, oh, my God, they were so crazy. You guys were nuts that night. And we're like, you were just. We had like a couple beers. Maybe yeah. we had like one beer and we were watching like football yeah. in the bar. And they're like, these guys party like wild. It's, it's like, I think almost a lot like because the, yeah, the attention is drawn. They they, there's a us. lot of little people. Yeah. They just see us together yeah. at like a little people convention. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, we'll have a couple beers or a beer or something in the lobby. But and they can like, get crazy. They can get they crazy. They get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's not for this podcast, but yeah. they, uh, yeah, they, they're, they're, they has can been be stories. fun. I've had some crazy, stories. but you know, stories about the Wizard I of Oz. I know all kinds of stories about it. Uh, but th- the fact is, there was nothing really crazy. I don't think anyone hung himself. Uh, what was some of the stories you know, though? Nothing really. I mean, it was just more. So you don't like, know any stories. <laughs> <laughs> the stories are, I mean, there, there definitely were. 
there were people that like, yeah, I'm like, I'm a, I'm an expert. Nothing really happened. Mm, yeah. Uh, but mostly it was just them kind of getting together and meeting each other. And they would drink or something at night. But all this stuff with like Judy Garland was like, ah, this one guy was hitting on me or grabbing my butt. You know, it's like it was all made up crazy yeah, stuff. Shut up, Judy. Shut <laughs> up. Get in there. Put your dumb <laughs> slippers. What do you know? But it wasn't it wasn't the case. It was just like they would hang I, out and they would drink, though. So there was like a bar that, that you could like walk to. So yeah. people would like you know, it was the first time you see little people. Yeah. It's not like now or you can yeah. go to a little people convention or you, you meet people on the Internet. They had never seen little people. So it was like they were hooking up. When did romances. this movie come out? I think one little person. Huh? 1938. 38? One, one of the little people yeah. did have like a gun or a knife or something and was like going to kill like another one. Like was like like getting crazy. I never heard this was the munchkin that hung himself. I always heard it was the guy that worked there. That's one urban legend that is a guy hung that he did accidentally. He fell. Yeah, press play. Another story. Well, it. this guy, this is a guy analyzing it, so it may not. Uh, oh, so that's that's the body back there. Yeah. Now, the the story that they. Don't you see him swing? In that version. See, there's another He's one. He's moving a little bit. Right? It's no, but I think you see man. him go. You see him like. That right there is swinging back and forth. I know, but you see him. There's nothing to. Then he swings into the frame. Uh, Supposedly, and I've seen a different version. There, Los Angeles Zoo loaned some animals, some real animals, on the set, and that's like a crane or something that's flapping its wings. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Have I mean, you heard this? I, I I heard the story. I heard was that it was one of the um, stagehands. No, it was one of the Munchkins who was so they were being so mistreated on the set. Yeah, I don't think that, they were. That, well, that's just you know. That's I'm an expert in this, <laughs> and you're. They were treated great. They were treated great. They were lucky to. They didn't make a ton of money. No one made a lot of money. I mean, it's 1938. It was like, everyone was making like 25 bucks a week or something. It can't, yeah. but they they couldn't have been treated. 1938, I'd imagine you're not treated as good as you would be now. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Especially if you're being a little person. Yeah, but True. yeah, I mean. Uh, but it's yeah. I mean, didn't they do? Who came from that movie? Wasn't there some guys? Some of the little people ended up doing a bunch of stuff, right? Like they, there was a guy Jerry Marin uh, who was in that, and he uh, he like the rest of, he ended up becoming like the uh, Oscar Mayer Wiener guy, yeah. and uh, oh, wow. and he just passed away a couple years ago, but yeah. had all kinds of money because he bought up all this land. Like, used his yeah. money to buy land in L.A. He's, like, the smartest dude ever. So he's, like, like, the smartest guy. Yeah. And so there and there was a lot of other people that were, like, you know, had regular jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Barty, who was my hero, was too young to be in it. But Jerry Marin, I think he wasn't even old enough. He just kind of Billy was Barty's like, Billy yeah. Barty's your hero. Didn't I say that was your hero yeah. last week? Yeah. No. No, no I said the other guy. P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum. Barnum. That's yeah. what I meant. Big difference. Yeah. One guy was like, "Look, you're, I am your master. Yeah. You, you will do this trick." Yeah. <laughs> Other guy created Little People of America. Yeah. Well, kind of the same. Thing. Uh, three minute and a baby. <laughs> three minute and the baby ghost. You guys know this? No, I don't. No. All right. So, well, let's just show it to you. Good old Tom Selleck. Do you know this movie, Three Minute Baby? Three Minute Baby. I know. Ted Look Danson, great. Uh, that's Ted Danson, yeah. Tom movie. Selleck, and uh, I'd like to watch it again. And Bob Saget, I think. Bob uh, Saget? I may be wrong about it. Ted Danson. I think you're wrong. Tom Selleck. Oh, no, we're about to, do, are we just going to tell when we see this? I'm going to put the I'll point. Let it. us see it. All right. Let's look in the background when they walk. And we're about to see. If you're, if you're listening at home, we're watching uh, Three, Three Minute Baby, and there's a ghost in the background. Oh, oh yeah. gosh. Where? Yeah. I missed that. Right okay. The, in. So uh, go back. We should have probably not played that whole clip. It was thirty seconds. Of <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, right there. Can can people Nick see it at see home it. or no? If they watch on YouTube, they can see it. If uh, Did you see if, it, Nick? if not, we're show it on. We're posted on Instagram see it, and see if you can notice the baby. I I I, I won't. See, we can play this sixty five times. I won't see it. Yeah, right, you, I'll show it I don't think Nick's found the, the TV in the room, so <laughs> he doesn't know where that's at. <laughs> My vision is but not. It's, should I show it one more time? Yes, yeah. just one show time. it. Just so we can point to it. Yeah, you know. Nick, no, watch behind the curtains. Pause it so you can see it. Oh, see, wow, yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. It's in the back, and the, there's a curtain, and it's, it looks like a little boy or something or yep. a kid. Yeah, and the he's story. There. The story is a kid died in this house, and that the, the movie big was cheers filmed. fan. 
Yeah. <laughs> Loves Ted Danson. <laughs> yeah. So the kid died in the house, supposedly. Um, but the truth is, it's a cardboard cutout of Ted Danson wearing a, a top hat and a tuxedo. Yeah. I love Ted Danson. So, yeah. He's great. <laughs> I, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm a that fan has a lot to do yeah. with. Yeah. I'm so, a, yeah, I'm a big fan. He's a wonderful. I've heard he's the nicest person ever too. I met him. I've, he is. Yeah, you have. There. Uh, I know Drew did whatever show, last show. He was just on. Oh good, yeah. What is it? The good place. The good or, place. He yeah. was on. Yeah. And he's just like Ted's. Just a true joy. Yeah. Just a true, true joy. Uh. So it was just a cardboard cutout. They did it on purpose. Just being funny. No, or? they did it on purpose. There was a scene um, that got cut out of the movie that where Ted Danson, I think, is holding the cardboard cut yeah. out of him because he's in the movie. He plays an actor, I think. Yeah. That's ah. supposed to be a cardboard cut out of a movie he'd done. Yeah. But since that scene never made it, there was no context to why that was sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so they man. thought it was ghost. It that, looks that so looks creepy, crazy. Dude. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're about to be done. Uh, what do is what's the the scariest haunted house in America? I want I wanted to see that. All right, uh, uh, I've read. I mean, have you been? You've gone to haunted house? No, you've never went to one. Ever? I, I, no, I haven't. I've, I I remember being a kid and my uncle being like, "That house is haunted." Yeah, and we we're like, "Okay, well, let's yeah. not go there." Okay, but I mean, like, so like a haunted house in you know that you pay to go to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I you've like done that. The fun ones where it's like a a ride, you know, like a haunted hayride. Yeah. So you've done that. Yeah. Yeah. So you never love to that. haunted like a. F- I would do that tonight if we were like, we're on a haunted ha- hayride. Yeah. Well, this, this this whole conversation, I mean, you've changed my plan. I was like, you're <laughs> in a haunted house. You go, no. And I go, okay. And I go, never even like one. You go, yeah, I've been to one of those and I would love to go tonight. I mean, I went from, I don't think you know what this is, to we now have plans of going to an actual haunted house. Uh, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, the turn of events that was. <laughs> Is unbelievable. <laughs> to go. Uh, so we all right. So yeah, you've been to one. I would. I would. I've been to a few on us. I don't love them. I love them in theory. I do love them, and I want to go to them. I get so scared of them, and they. And <laughs> oh, we they, gotta it, go tonight. It, it always the Jason at the the Jason at the end. That's what would scare me. You always know. I remember we would go. You know, with my dad and. uh we went there, or my my dad and our family family friends, the Dentons, and they, we we all go, we get done with it. I mean, it's, you know, it's an insane. Experience. It's outside. It's going through the woods, and then you get to the Friday the Thirteenth. You know, Jason. There's always a Jason at the end, and they're always going to get you with a chainsaw. That's where Jason and the chainsaw is, which I've, I'm sure he had a chainsaw in the movies, but I think it, machete was a lot. But they'd always have a Jason guy, and he'd always have a chainsaw and the, it was like when you get to the end of it just do not run if you don't run and walk he's just standing next to you with a chainsaw and then you then you can go about your day if you run it's it's over like he's chasing you and now it's a problem oh, yeah. and so it was like do not run it's like being so attacked by a run. crocodile so they our dads Wayne, our dads are both telling us that they all they telling all the kids all of us kids going when we get there, do not run. If you just walk, he's going to just be next to you with a chainsaw. If you run, he's going to chase you. So we're all doing it. <laughs> and then Brandon and uh, Brandon and Drew, the two other kids, they would go, okay, okay. And we get to the end, and we're walking, and then they, boom, they're gone, dude. And they just, and then Jason just, Oosh. and then so now we have nothing because Jason's now chasing them into the parking lot, and then we end up finding them in just the back of someone's truck. <laughs> they just were laid. They were laid down in the back in the oh, truck bed. Great. They just finally found a truck and just laid there and to hide from them. What and if we, somebody else like drove away in the truck and now they're just they did? In and the... we have the last time we saw them. The story yeah. takes a sad turn. I didn't want to get into it, but <laughs> it's no. They're uh, yeah. I mean, they they're just in the back of someone's truck. So do they have to pace it out where like that guy's chasing you and then he has to come back and rest up a little bit? Yeah, I think there's a few of them at the end. Okay. I'd imagine. Depends on where you go. I think they're getting too real now. Uh, like I think some of them, they're starting to get where they can touch you. I, I want to see the story because I looked up one time, Scariest Haunted House. And the one, do you stay at it? Do you spend the night at it? I don't or? think this one you do. That's, okay. That sounds awful. It's like, are you yeah. awake? No. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> 
So the scariest haunted house in America is in Summertown, Tennessee, in Lawrence County. Wow. Did you know that? No. How far is that? How is Lawrence County? It's Lawrenceburg. Yeah. Tonight. Oh, that's where, uh, yeah, my uh, father-in-law lives in Lawrenceburg. <laughs> so not far at all, right? Yeah. Hour and Hour and something. Uh, it says, you really don't want to do this. This is what every person says after failing to complete the tour of McCamey Manor. Uh, it's the most haunted, terrifying haunted house experience in America. One you're not allowed to attend until you watch a two hour long video, sign a 40 page waiver, create a safe word, wow. pass a physical and more. Um, that sounds pretty awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you, we need a blood sample they for you say to get what in it, here. There's a, um, I can click on the website. You too. probably will yeah. die. But it says intense audio, lighting, extreme low visibility, strobe and fog effects, damp and wet conditions, physically demanding environment, close contact <laughs> with creatures. Physically demanding. Might be touched, very real and graphic scenes of horror. If we want to punch you in the face, we can sign this. It sounds pretty awesome. I mean, I don't know if I'd do it, but. Playing on Netflix, Dark Tourist, episode eight. So you can see something about it on Netflix. I guess. Uh, Dark Tourist, Episode 8. I watched a news story on it. I mean, you scare. can get like buried alive. It's just crazy stuff. Oh, I'm not trying to do yeah. it. Yeah. This sounds No crazy. one's ever finished it. No one's ever finished it. Yeah. According to this news article. How long would it be? This is the one I looked up. I thought you stayed there, but I thought. Yeah, maybe you do. No, I no, I, I, that makes more sense. No one's ever finished it. Would you do this, Nate? I mean, you you want to? I just don't know. If anybody goes and does this, let us know. If anybody is, if you're listening to this, I would love to talk. If someone goes to it, e- email us Nate Land and Nate Bargetti I mean, if you're if you're if you especially if you're in Tennessee and you can come and tell us about it, I'll we'll have you on the podcast. And yeah. uh, I'd love to uh, see what they you know to talk to someone about. Just what what happened? What if somebody has like an awful scar on their face? Like we had a great time, but I am missing like a little bit of my cheek. Well, this one you're going to get touched. I mean, was this the main one? Was there anything? Was no, there, this was the main one. The main one. I, I wonder, don't know. I wonder if they have like COVID protocols at this house now. <laughs> They're like yeah. they have to like. This do might everything. be the best time to go to it. They can't. Yeah. Maybe they can't touch it. Yeah, I don't know. I found this article from last year, so I don't know if it's that's pretty wild, this year. man. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Uh, all right. Aaron just yawned. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, good night. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> I tried to hide it. Sorry, we're boring you. Oh. Well, he's you not know? wearing his NASCAR How'd jacket. How'd the podcast go? Well, if they're not interested, <laughs> I don't know why I would be. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that is it for this week, everybody. Remember, next week uh, we will have the episode that uh, we already pre taped. It's a very fun episode, uh, a Bigfoot episode. Uh, so it kind of goes with the Halloween stuff, and then we'll be back uh, with you November one. Uh, or Nick that, won't. The week of, we'll... Nick will be gone. This yeah. is Nick's final episode. This is my uh... Uh, Mick. Thank yeah. you, Mick. If Mick's <laughs> ever back here, obviously he'll always be back on the show. Uh, but you know, I think this will be good. I think it'll speed the show up and we can get back to being funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, go. Uh, Nate Land, follow all the stuff. Keep subscribing. Do all that stuff. One night only tour. Just a few dates left. So if you want to come out to see that. And then, uh, yeah, next time I see you, I'll be done. I'll be hopefully done taping the special. So I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, All right. We love all of you. Thank you. Thank you.